Hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's, let's, let's do a little sidetrack here. Why do you hate the gummy ship part? The gummy ship part it was probably one of the best things of King Oh my Hearts. god, we cannot oh, be friends. Uh, you are just... I, I'm with Taylor on this one. No, not especially one. King Hearts, oh, King Hearts 2. In King was... Hearts 2, you could you could customize that shit way better. It, was... it actually felt like, like there's more of a point. The gummy ship served as a purpose to give Chip and Dale a reason to stay in the series. <laughs> yes. Other than that, there was no purpose. Hey. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the Anime Izuka Podcast, week four of the spring 2021 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season anime airing our week. I'm your host, David, and joining today, we have Stren. Hello. Next up, we have Ku. Yo, yo. Next up, we have Taylor. Hello. And finally, we have Justin. Hey, guys. All right. Uh, no anime news this week, so we just got to jump right into our anime discussions. Let's go to the first show. Let's talk about Nomad Mega Box 2. Yeah. Oh man, this episode! <laughs> so, so this arc, good. this arc, I think it's still gonna. I think it's gonna still be very strong. No, with that, definitely. With uh, with that beginning, um, God, was did it, I don't know if anybody did anybody of of us like say that it was gonna be um cancer or was it the the typhoon? I mean, what'd you guys guess? I don't think any of us really speculated pops like what okay. had occurred, but. You know, now that you say it, like it, it does bring back, you know, the whole entry into the season where the first thing they mention is, you know, the typhoon and the yeah. like effects that it had on people. But, you know, until today's episode, we'd never had that direct correlation that, uh, you know, I that kind of played a major role into it. The typhoon. Right. So mm -hmm. that was the way that yeah, they opened up the first episode. Yeah, I do remember that. I don't know if it was just to kind of maybe throw us off just to, like, not like the real kind of like the real story. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, th I think we we pretty much got the idea of like what ha like uh like what ha ended up happening. The, even like e like uh, was it the like the the side that that Sachio and um and Joe were both taking? You normally think they would be like reversed, where it was actually like uh where they were both taking it completely differently. Where there was where basically Sachio like really like actually recognized like the the whole situation, what was gonna like what was happening, and then he you know he just kind of stood by when basically then uh when Joe just was doing his own thing I, mainly, I, mainly just kind of keeping his mind off of the it just, subject it, it feels like like everyone just like took took the shit on like joe for, like i didn't really feel like it was like i mean that i don't know like i didn't feel like what he did was that wrong because pops wanted him to like to fight anyways and like and and then yeah he was doing it just to see if he can help out so i don't know it feels really weird to, like just see everyone just getting up on joe like this like i don't know i just yeah. i thought that was weird what I'm sorry, I'll, I'll actually let you guys go. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I guess I can kind of understand where, where Sachio is coming from because he is the one, you know, that continued to visit, you know, after Joe had already come to him and said, like, hey, I want to do this fight, you know. Yeah. Do I have your support? And he's like, yeah, go for it. Um, And then, you know, obviously, as Sachio started to visit, he was having more and more complications and there wasn't, you know, really any certainty of if he'd even make it, you know, after the fight to get that continued treatment. So I can get where Satio is coming from. I think it's something that for Joe, it's, you know, what he's always known, like up to that point, like, you know, fighting is kind of his way to make things happen. So um, I'm not surprised. It kind of went that way. I'm not surprised by Joe's actions of continuing to focus on this fight because for him, he is looking at like the larger picture of sorts of keeping uh pops alive where um then to Sachio's credit you know he's focusing on more of that direct connection because i feel like Sachio had a much more emotional connection than joe did in a sense but like it really took more, him dying well, i think it was more realistic kind of like more realistic as well mm -hmm. or uh, where Sachio's was taking more of the realistic approach when i think joe was well the only the only thing that i, I thought of like with the whole thing with joe and Sachio is where like joe like recognized like that uh, you know, like the the situation that pops was in, and it wasn't. It was pretty bad, and I, I think it was more just like one keeping his mind off of it, or he or he just couldn't stand. He couldn't like bring himself to be around him just because of uh, um, he just you know what what was happening and what was going to happen. Yeah, I get that, but it just seems like not just Sasha, like everyone was just um, ganging up on 
on uh just on joe so i don't know i just feel like it was really unfair in that sort of like balance or like where like it seems like it seems like you know like uh like all the kids and aragagi like they all like want to just blame the joe for not being there it's like right and that just led him to like the whole path of um of uh you know the whole like issues him being addicted to painkillers and like being on being on the road so right mm -hmm. i don't know so i mean it's a different viewpoint of like you know kids versus adults as well not that joe's like you know he's still obviously in kind of his later years where i wouldn't say he's no like he's not old by any means but it is that difference of of viewpoints as well um but no i'm definitely interested to see where things go from here especially you know when we got that reintroduction to Sachio when he returns you know to the gym when joe's sleeping there overnight and just starts beating the Ever living crap out of him. I was gonna say, like, how the hell is this? Even if he's older, how the hell is he beating up Joe? Like, even if he's a mega box fighter, it's like I don't know. Yeah, I don't find he's not beating Joe. That much of a one-sided beating, you know. One of the yeah. Well, I just think one. It was about you know the shock, the shock of seeing him, and another one. It's also like you know recognizing that it's Sachio. So like, I it's almost like I'm sure he's not just gonna take a swing at him. But like he got like like bruised and like bloodied like in his face. So I don't know. Yeah, um, it's definitely interesting to see Sakio going down the same route as Joe, because, you know, as we saw towards the end of the episode, um, he's now, you know, entering into these underground fights, very similar to Joe was doing. And I'm sure there's going to be some kind of um, conflict point or, or point that comes to a head where, you know, Joe's going to kind of have to get him out of that scene because it looks like, you know, he's obviously fighting for some pretty shady dudes in right. this underground ring. So. Yeah. So I wonder if yeah, the story just shift to like Joe now being the coach for Sachio, even if he hates him. But do you think it's gonna be more like a mentorship with Sachio and uh, and Joe or no? Kind of, I mean, it kind of feels mm. like that's what they're setting like that's what they're setting up with before with Chief, and now it seems like it just got passed on to Sachio. So yeah, that would make sense, I guess. And like, I guess the other thing is like if it does become that mentorship and you know coach or fighter relationship again now with Joe being in the coaching spot, um. I wonder because do we know how much time had passed between when Pops died to when, you know, we first see Joe and Was everything? Obviously, years? it's been I like, think... yeah, I wanted to say five years or yeah. something like that. I think like he that. left so, like five years ago. Five, yeah. So, yeah. so that makes me wonder, um, is that uh, Edison Liu fighter still probably like holding it down from like the Megalo box standpoint? And now is it going to be, you know, Sachio getting involved in the Megalomania and then potentially fighting Edison Liu, where originally, you know, Joe was supposed to fight him. Because oh um, I feel yeah. like that would make more sense because I feel like they're going to bring back Yuri. Like, they have to have Yuri come back in and Some sort of like coaching. His... Either coaching or he just has to have his reunion with Joe. I feel like that's where this show is really kind of now going towards is like, okay, we're, we're seeing the different reunions of characters. And, right. you know, they specifically mentioned like, oh, it'd be great for you, you know, to fight against Edison Liu because he's Yuri's protege. Mm -hmm. And just the connection, you know, that we got from season one between yuri and yeah. joe well, well i mean i don't think if, if yuri comes back one i don't think he's gonna be fighting he was like oh no. no 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 no, no. <laughs> so. yeah, yeah yeah so so that's gonna be the difference then right so it's gonna be you know joe and yuri in the coaching spots and then potentially sachio and if this edison Liu guy is still you know fighting then i could see that kind of be the um like pinnacle or climax of this season if they want to go that route yeah, I uh, I just don't think. Well, one, I don't think I don't think Sachio would be the one doing the fighting though. Um, I feel like it would have to be Joe. Like it's like Sachio's so far behind. I yeah. think with uh, he's not he's not no, meant to be definitely. a fighter either. Yeah. So, so yeah. yeah, if that were the case, then then I could see you know Joe just saying like, "Hey, you don't want to go down this route," getting him out of the sketchy fighting, and then it going back to what it was where you know Joe's now fighting and he's going to use uh, Chiefs. Um, Megalo gear. gear that yeah. he was gifted or given, um, and then Sakio will be his coach. So. That's what I was. That's what I was thinking. Like the most likely. But what would I mean? What would get? What would get Joe back in it though? Like, what maybe would be, like, maybe the, wanting to rebuild the gym because you like know at the end he was, crazy he, was, money. he was digging yeah. out the sign. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. I could see that being a driving factor as he wants to, you know, rebuild what everyone else kind of viewed him as destroying by what he did. You know, the, the, I'll say the like here, so. for the rest of the season, I guess this arc, like I'm kind of worried, like that, like I don't know, I just, 
the whole attitude like towards Joe just kind of turned me off. So I'm hoping that doesn't bother me personally. Mm-hmm. Like I, I don't know. I hope like I get to enjoy more of the season because I really enjoyed the first arc. So hopefully we we'll see like Makes more sense. more backstory. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Um. Other than that. I don't have much else from this episode, you know, yeah. obviously continuing to do very well and, yeah. you know, shine in its its own place or its unique kind of focus. So just looking forward to them keeping it up there. Yep. It's still a huge surprise. I'm loving it. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's going to be it for Mango Box 2. Uh, move on to our next show. Let's talk about Nagatoro. Even though, like... It feels, I don't know, it just feels like it's been the same for a while, so I don't have anything new to add <laughs> for this week. Well, you know what they say, David. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. All right. Uh, but, yeah, I don't know. Uh, you do get more fan service, so I'm not complaining. I don't know if anyone else is complaining. No, no complaints. Um... Yeah, I don't really have anything to add this week either. I mean, I'm I still like it. Like I'm enjoying it. Like I smile and I think it's cute sometimes. Um, just but like David said, it's just kind of more of more of the same. More of the same. I don't know. Like I mean, comedy is mm-hmm. good, but like I feel like it hasn't been anything new. So like, although I do hate the uh, the friends more oh, God, more of each episode. Like I seriously thought that it wasn't going to occur where. Uh, Hachi would touch the girl's breast, even though it was just bread. But I thought that for sure uh, Nagatoro would have popped them before then and stopped them with like a roundhouse kick or something of that nature. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, I guess she's not always going to be there to stop them. So uh, I guess that just goes to show that they're going to be able to get away with more things as time goes on. And if anything, I'm assuming their friendship is going to break up later, like towards the end, I guess. Or, like, she would have to have to give them a serious talk down so they don't do things like that again. Because obviously, she really likes the guy, right? And I'm assuming her friends know I don't as well. Do a talk down. Seems like it seems like t- she's just the type. I don't know. I don't uh, know either. Like, yeah. I, actually, I could go either way for me. So. I think it'd be interesting if this show also kind of delved into like toxic friendships because that's definitely a thing and that's definitely what they're in. <laughs> like yeah. that's a mm-hmm. shitty friendship. Her friend number one, her friends are already shitty people to begin with. So they're definitely gonna be <laughs> shitty just, friends. Just that gallery with Whoa, stereotypes. Strong words. I mean I mean they're kind strong of words. Strong. I mean she already she already I'm kinda like um was pissed at them at the lunch table the last episode, so mm-hmm. Yeah, and then they did it again without her around. Like they're not good people, so See, see, the last time it was kind of just playful tendencies, and now that it should have been known that uh, with the way she reacted to them last time, that they wouldn't do it again. But this is what pushed it over the like the limit, I think. So I think at this point, that's where anything goes. But before it was more of just playful, uh, like poking. So, um, but yeah, but yeah, but for sure though, this by the fact that they're they're kind of scummy as friends. So. <laughs> Uh, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. I guess. I still want to give shout outs to the animation because like they had like the like the sunlight effect going on in the room it looked really nice. Like I still don't understand why this show has such good budget for animation, but there it is. So it looks really nice. I feel like um the like MC got like none of that budget. I feel like he's like the most basic <laughs> thing in every single episode. <laughs> He has to be though. I I would I would imagine he has to be is he, right because he's like, like is he is he the self insert is that why? I guess so because I was like I was like looking at her and I was like counting the number of different colored like highlights she had in her eyeballs and it was like twenty something at one point and he just has black dots always basically mm-hmm. like it's like good enough. <laughs> well, like like her hair too is like really nicely like 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 mm-hmm. drawn and his hair is like such a fucking mess and just so generic looking so dude even even the 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 uh the sketch of her in in the anime looks better than he does like the budget <laughs> totally goes all into nagatoro they know their audience but That's again why. i can't really complain they know the audience. but yeah just hey, man. just just the range that you get with this character oh it's it's lovely that's how that's how it always goes cool dudes never get budgets Unless you're some other uh, edgy MC character that I won't say here, but um... uh, we would like to have a word with you. <laughs> Dude, getting all the budget notches. 
Right. All the Fujoshis. <laughs> but, you know, I think it's fine, though, just because, again, the focus is more of the fact that, you know, insert lame guy here, and then here's this dominant female character that's super popular, super uh, pretty, and uh, she seems to be interested in this guy for some odd reason. So, uh, I think it drives the point home. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's all I've got. Yeah, I don't have much to say, so just keep looking forward to the rest of the season still calling it the meme show I, I haven't checked any of like I don't know like if it's because anyone's changed their profile pictures or not but I'm pretty sure it's still popular so mm, I'm pretty sure it's popular for a certain group of people okay so. we'll leave it yeah. at that then alright that's gonna be <laughs> it for Nagotoro and then let's move on to our next show it's like well I'm a spider so what oh man Ooh. well this week, they decided to take a play out of a Shield Heroes book where uh, they took a character that uh, was a monster and decided to have them take on a human form in a very, you know, cute human form, to say mm-hmm. the least. So um, that was definitely, uh, I guess, not a surprise, but a, a pleasant addition to the ensemble of characters that we get to have in this wonderful show. Mm-hmm. Um, but other than that, uh, I felt like the balance between kumiko and the human side was obviously better this week than it was uh last week Mm -hmm. um and overall um you know some parts were a little bit fan servicey obviously with you know faye's new uh glow up of sorts to her human form um but also with our uh our beach-esque episode that we kind of got you know uh mixed in as they were trying to head towards uh the labyrinth area but um The last thing I would say just for me from this week's episode was um, I guess I wasn't surprised by the very end when we see uh, Kumiko facing off with the Demon Lord character. Mm -hmm. And I would say the only reason that I wasn't surprised and I know, you know, in previous uh, weeks, Ku, um, I originally had thought that they were potentially different characters. And the only reason I had thought that or was based off like a comment somebody made when we first saw the demon lord and they're just like oh hey you guys mistaked kumiko for the demon lord so i kind of got spoiled oh, in that regard damn you guy <laughs> yeah and, and, i mean no worries to them it's my own kind of fault there but uh right it, it was something that i guess when i saw it i was just like okay like i w- i was hoping it wasn't a spoiler but it turned out to be <laughs> i mean it and overall i think the the next reasonable idea or concept would be the fact that um since Kumiko's immortal now, she can't really die. But that doesn't mean that, you know, you can't overcome anything, right? I could, like, throw cement over your legs, you know, have it throw you in the ocean. You'll be immortal, but you're pretty much screwed for the rest of your life. <laughs> uh, so that was, like, a weird gimmicky thing to give to her. I don't know how that's going to help her with this upcoming fight. But the only thing I could think of is maybe she transferred her mindset over to the Demon Lord. Uh, mm. Otherwise, how would she know of like the people who are reincarnated, right? Unless the Demon Lord is some other character from the real world that was yeah. like, reincarnated in this world. So um, I'm still having given up the fact that maybe Kumiko did become the next Demon Lord, but yeah, it, it's it's kind of up in the air right now. Right, throws you a little bit for a loop now. Now it's like, all right, how will we get that yeah. explanation? And now to your point, obviously, with Kumiko's new immortality ability. Where can she go with that? Obviously, you know, there is the potential for more than just being able to, you know, live forever. Maybe it is, you know, some some mind transfer things and other stuff of that sort. So mm-hmm. we will see. We will see. Um, but uh, what what did you think of uh, Faye's, you know, new form? Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, I've always thought Faye was a bitch. So the fact that she got her human form back was was kind of lame. But it gave me hope that if she was able to get a humanoid form, Kumiko would be able to get a human form as well, right? Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm waiting for. Hopefully, okay. it's it was that girl that had the long white hair that was next to uh, uh, Ariel, the Demon Lord. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Uh, but yeah, it was kind of a weird design too, right? Like, I've seen some hybrid humanoid, like dragonoid forms, mm-hmm. and uh, it looks pretty weird. I'm not gonna lie. Because she yeah. doesn't have her wings up, like, in the back of her, like, Yeah, it's, like, area. on the it's sides, kind of right? Side and middle, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of a weird design. 
Yeah. It would also be weird, too, like, just with that whole, like, shape-shifting aspect of it now. Because obviously, you know, when, mm-hmm. when shit hits the fan, I'm sure... Well, actually, no, I guess I shouldn't say that because she did use, like, the dragon beam or whatever when they were swimming underwater and fighting against the uh, the water dragon. Water so dragon? Yeah. Maybe she is just going to stay in that human form now. It won't be any, like, anamorph-type focus of going from, you know, this human character to the demon, or not demon, but to the dragon character, things like that. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, otherwise, um, I'm glad, obviously, you know, the pacing continues to move forward. I know realistically we didn't get a whole lot in terms of like them heading to their next destination um but i'll I'll definitely take it you know over last week where (laughs) to take david's words not really much happened so uh this week uh this week was definitely uh, a plus so yeah they also dropped a bombshell as well right uh we did confirm that the class did die because apparently the demon lord Mm, and the hero fought and they were trying to do something and it spilled over to the real world which i still don't get like this week's episode was such a like like drop of like lore like it was just big lore dump that i'm still trying to figure out exactly what's going on because apparently this is a a system that's been under administration with d and some other people Mm -hmm. and apparently it spilled out of their their universe in a sense into the real world it's kind of like it kind of reminds me of digimon right in a sense where it's like the digital world and it kind of like was able to seep into the real world Mm -hmm. and it affected them uh so now we need to know what's going on apparently d was one of the students in the real world and uh we need to figure out who that was and uh yeah there's 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 so much that's going on that they kind of just dropped it and then just left you off with this like crazy cliffhanger like what's gonna happen next so yeah for sure so um again you know glad we have a a lot of episodes still to work with to to get those answers and um Mm -hmm. like you said i I think the the one great thing of this show is that um apart from you know the, the good balance of you know comedy action and everything that we get to see you know we do have uh a lot of mystery still to, to unpack of what this world really is. And like you said, are they taking kind of like a, a Digimon-esque focus where there's, you know, the larger p- people at play now with these administrators and even mm-hmm. furthermore, you know, who exactly these administrators could be because mm-hmm. I feel like for the most part of the uh, characters from the classroom that we did see, um, you know, we at least know from them like which ones they were. But I guess... You know, we still don't know of the 26. There's probably still like a handful still that we haven't really gotten much information about. So, yeah, interested to see. Yeah, but yeah, well, hopefully we'll see. We'll get more info with the next episode. Definitely, definitely. All right, so we're at it there for I'm a Spire. So what? Move on to our next show. Let's talk about Hige Hero. Oof. Ooh, Goto coming out swinging hard. Jeez, oh my yeah. goodness! There's hope, guys. There's yeah. Hope. Ah no. Like, um, I, I want to say first that Ku. I know she's her girl and all, but that's so dirty what she did. Like that, that was a bitch move. God, it was. It definitely was. But you know, I respect Yoshida's response to that, and with the conclusion that we got, I'm okay with it. Dude, the conclusion was kind of dumb. It's just like, oh, I really <laughs> was, like you. Pretty dumb, but, but I'm okay with it. Oh, it, 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 the whole thing was just like, I, I like, I like you, but I'll actually like, uh, you know, come back. I'll, I'll get back to you when I actually like want to date you or whatever it was. Yeah, I thought like, what the fuck? Like that was like that whole thing was just really weird. It's dirty. Man. Well, again, um, she she is still his that was a boss. Demo. She is still his boss, so it doesn't matter. I'm, Going to let it slap. I mean, you can't really have a relationship with your boss. Yeah, they're going to go well in the all the time. They go out to eat all the time. Right, yeah, they've already got coworkers. Of... That's fine, but if oh, you want to have relationships, oh. okay. Oh, I'm sorry, I forgot. I was speaking to children I mean, here. I guess, I guess with, you know, taking taking the office politics out of everything, I I am glad that there are those other avenues now. I guess for for Yoshida to explore, in a sense, for lack of a better word. Mm-hmm. Um, I thought the uh other high school girl was was a nice addition you know to have to to the cast here because i'm sure you know she's obviously shown that you know she wasn't buying the lies that um sayu and yoshida were originally trying to feed her um Mm -hmm. and especially you know when she was having that final conversation as yoshida was walking her to the uh 
the train station and sorts and then just both like leveling with each other like all right we're not going to put up with any bs on either of our ends um right. but the real thing that stood out for me from this week's episode was the very end um when we got oh, yeah. the brief flashbacks of sayu's high school life and um correct me if i'm wrong i wanted to say that from that flashback it almost seemed like you know one of her classmates was like standing on the edge of a school roof mm. so assuming they're going with that usual route of you know <laughs> typically there's some series of events that lead to you know a classmate friend committing suicide and again that's probably me just having wonder egg priority stuck in my mind oh, and so, yeah. <laughs> so i can't help but think this like all like, right here voice. we go like <laughs> like, what, like what? I was gonna say, like, I, I know, like, this episode focused a lot on Yoshida, but I still think, like, this show is mainly about, like, Sayu's, like, character development, so we gotta know what's yeah. going on with her and all that, so. I would, like, when I, when, uh, when you kind of bring that up, I wonder if, like, she feels somewhat, like, somewhat responsible for, you know, like, we're, we're, if we're just assuming, you know, she jumped, um, then that would maybe cause her to run, you know, run away and kind of start everything. Probably, yeah. Um, also, one of the things we were wrong about, that I don't think Sayu goes back to school anymore. She just gets a part-time job. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I don't think she's going to do high school. But you know who knows? But I guess there's always that chance. Uh, the opening does. I feel like there wasn't like a scene in the opening where she's walking to school in a sense, but that could just be a flashback. Oh, never mind then. No, no, but that, that could no, just no, be no. a flashback because like, we, we, we do have on the flashbacks that we saw at the end of yeah, this episode. We right. do need to figure out what causes suicide, how it occurred, and what caused like Sayu to run away from home. Which I'm I'm sure it's tied to the suicide somehow. So, yeah, uh, okay. yeah, should be interesting to say at least. Yeah, hopefully they do it better than one or eight priority, but we'll <laughs> we'll wait until we get there. Yeah, yeah. Just... we'll have a little bit more time than Wonder Egg does. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just yeah, I just keep saying it like we just need more Sayu backstory because it's been really focused on Yoshida. So Yeah, and then yeah. basically the the D of a boss. <laughs> Go what is it? Go, what was her name? Go, Goto. Go 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 okay. Man, I was about to say that and then I immediately thought like no, that's jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I think she, but, that's, I think, but anyway, yes. she's the yes. one you can marry. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Even though basically it, the only reason I don't know. Do you guys believe it that she basically was just like shy about it or whatever before? Oh, hell and, no. Uh, <laughs> okay. I don't uh, think so. Well, and it's, <laughs> you can play this game, sir. Like, oh, he's looking, he's looking well, clean now. In this type yeah. of manga, it's like, I wouldn't be surprised that, uh, I don't know. Like, I think for me, uh, kind of like what you're saying, I, I'm more invested in Sayu's backstory kind yeah. of at this point. And Yoshida, like obviously all his interactions with um, Sayu and him kind of probably being the one that really continues to help her out a lot. I honestly <laughs> could care less like, about the relationship well, between Yoshida I, and Goto. Like, I, just, I just feel like Sayu's just, just, she's like the most. She's there to uh, block everything. She's like the most important person in the story because like cause Yoshida's just a normal guy, so... Like the show yeah. is really all about Sayu, and so I don't know. To, like, to be fair, it's still, I want to say it's a strong 50 50. So, oh, for sure. Yeah, 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 in terms of who ends up being with each other at the end of the day. Right. So, yeah. I don't really uh, don't have, who knows? <laughs> I don't really have much. I like, when I, I was just like so triggered by uh, by by Goto, I was just most like, of that, so, <laughs> yeah, most of my thoughts were just from Goto, so but I guess I don't I need to repeat That's, them here. No, no, so. no, you guys don't get it, right? Like, the whole time that <laughs> they were having dinner, I was kind of like, yo, yo, don't be that guy, Yoshida. I have so much respect for you. Don't be the guy that just fall heads over heels and just accept the answer fight back my guy well, and, then I shot, mean, and then he shot back sure. so, yeah that's what i'm talking about sure, let's go he, did. he chill, still did chill, that but he still like back. He, yeah he she also pulled back, back and yeah. yeah yeah she also pulled back by saying ah oh, you know i just later what i'm ready to, like, to date i'm like this is the dumbest thing in the world yeah <laughs> that's all right i, I respect that because she is my boss <sighs> so i respect that but like I said, you want to play games? I could play games. You know, I'm sure Yoshida is ready to play games too. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see how or it goes. You could just, you yeah, know, she's good. Do other she's other mommy vibes instead of your of your relationships. Yep, there's yeah. some mommy vibes, but I would I think, definitely take Goto over mommy. <laughs> I think we definitely haven't seen the last of Goto in terms of Absolutely the, not. Well, the she's BS over. that she's gonna pull. Yeah, yeah she is. Oh, over. right, right. Yeah, yeah. that's where it ended. So, yeah. yeah, she'll probably do some. Yeah, some stuff. So yeah, we'll we'll see. Yeah. Like, if anything, Goto might be the one that reports, like, their relationship to the cops or whatever. 
Oh man. Cause and drama. Then what if then cool? Fa- what fa- happens? File a missing person report like the bitch she is. Like I said, two can play this game. All right. <laughs> I don't know uh, what more you can do when that happens. Uh, that's just me, all right? <laughs> But can we all give R.I.P. to Mishima, like the other girl? Because she stands no chance at this point. So oh, yeah, she's, just she's, she's like the only all... viable person in the show, and she's not gonna get. Any, she's not gonna win. I don't, right? I don't. Sadly, poor Iroha. Yeah, anyway. Somebody's got to be the loser. Well, this one probably multiple. You know, well, there's gonna be multiple losers for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. <laughs> well, we think. We shall Unless see. it goes off the rails. We yeah. shall see. <laughs> that's all I got. Yeah. Uh, that's it. Same. That's, Same. It. that's, it. that's it for Hige Hero. We'll continue the trauma next week. Let's uh, move on to our next show. Uh, let's talk about uh, Moriari the Patriot. And I just realized I forgot to watch this week's episode. So, Rip. So oh, you two, my lord, David. You, you had one carry. job. I know, right? I, t- I don't know why I forgot, but I forget. So just spoil me anyways. I don't really care. So. Oh, Rude. dude. Um, I thought this episode was decent. I mean, it was more of a fun episode where we get to see the plan of, you know, Moriarty kind of come to life of how they're dealing with the um, ongoing conflict of Jack the Ripper and how um, it's basically being used as a tool to pit the locals of this area of England against um, Scotland Yard and, you know, kind of bring about a English revolution of sorts on a smaller scale. Um, so I don't know. It was a fun episode for me to kind of turn my brain off with a lot of the action that was going on. There was one particular scene that was absolutely absurd. End. Yes. <laughs> oh I'm sure you know God. what I'm referring to. I was um, losing my mind. <laughs> yeah, that part was definitely unnecessary. I felt like they could have done it in a better manner of sorts. But well, I mean, hey. if it- if the guy, if an old man can jump off of like a, I don't know, twenty story high building and land on his feet and be just fine, I don't know why you have an issue with that. Just that, that's true. He did. He did. To your credit, Taylor, he did. You know, jam his knife into the wall, jump off the knife over like you know thirty people, and yeah, this guy's got to be pushing like I don't know 70? 60, 70. <laughs> yeah, like you know, he's no spring chicken by any means, but. You know, hey, he is the original Jack the Ripper, so we'll give it to him. Um, but overall, I, I think it was just, you know, a, a fine episode. Um, I think it just kind of gave credit of kind of the Lord of Crime group continuing to drive towards their ideologies. Um, and then, you know, we did kind of have the involvement of Holmes at the end and him understanding that this was completely kind of another test of Moriarty's to kind of get them into play. But uh, the thing that I enjoyed at the kind of like middle towards end of the episode was the introduction of, um, and I have the name here, Charles Augustus Milverton. Um, And so I had no idea who this individual was. I actually Googled their name. So they are, you know, a prominent character in the Sherlock Holmes series of stories. Um, and without any spoilers of sorts, they are the master of, I think it was either like, what was it? It's either like manipulation or blackmail. So sense with what we got from this week's episode, because we saw that the group that was creating this, you know, foe, um, Jack the Ripper, um, they were obviously having their strings pulled by another higher individual who is this Charles person. And at the end as well, we saw Charles was outside of the door of the like Scotland Yard precinct when one of the like commanders was really upset that mm-hmm. that kind of had all like foiled from their plans. So, yeah, overall, just another decent episode, nothing too spectacular, but. You know, it always looks really pretty when when they're doing it and animating it. So, yeah, I mean, at this point, I'm committed and I I enjoy the characters. Um, but it's getting a little bit to the point where they're testing my patience a little bit much for my taste. Um, that moment near the end that you mentioned definitely makes the list of like, I don't know. It, like this show, I feel like it doesn't have supernatural elements. It doesn't have powers. It doesn't have any of those things. So it bothers me when there's stuff that's so obviously c- completely unrealistic. Because I feel yeah. like that's not how they start. That's not the tone that they started out with for the show. 
So that bothers me. I, I mean, I think, and I think that's just a personal preference. I can't really say that I deduct points for the show because I think some people are, a lot of people are totally okay with it, but it, it just irks me. And then another thing too is near the beginning of the episode, another prostitute gets killed, I think, or something. And mm-hmm. you hear, um, you hear the, the lords of crime, all of them talking about, well, this is a setup. Nothing else happens. They have no other information. They just know that it's somebody that's orchestrating this. And I just felt like they really had nothing to go off of. Yeah. And it, I, I don't buy that anybody could c- come to the conclusion that they did with what information they were given. They even knowing were... <laughs> that they, they, they knew the original Jack the Ripper, even they said themselves, that's probably not even a connection. So there's nothing to be gained from that. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I feel like they do that for both Moriarty and Holmes. Sure. You know, Holmes mm-hmm. definitely gives, I think, you know, more credit towards the obvious ex- explanation of like deduction, which is really great. And then to your point, Taylor, like with Moriarty and their group, like there is none of that. It's mm-hmm. just a, oh, I wonder what's going on. You know, dead pan to Moriarty. And he's like, oh, of course, <laughs> you know, is this what's is going what's on. going on. And it's like, <laughs> all right, dude, like, you know, you can just do everything like that's cool. So <laughs> I, I totally agree with you that it's a little a little sloppy uh, uh, to say the least. Um, I think the other thing and, and not that it's like a huge deal. But I don't know why, like, whenever I think of Luis, his brother, like, mm-hmm. I don't expect him to just be, like, this absolute badass that has, like, the same <laughs> kind of level of skills as, like, everybody mm-hmm. else. But, you know, this scene, we saw that when they kind of crashed the party of, the, you know, the the group responsible for this fake Jack the River, his brother just goes absolutely ham mm-hmm. and takes out, like, five different people, just, like, mercilessly killing them all. Yeah. So. I know. That took me by surprise, too. I thought he was sick. Like, I thought he was yeah. sickly or something. I, I knew he was that... sick in the beginning, and I couldn't remember if they said, like, you know, after that event, he eventually mm-hmm. got the uh, surgery or procedure that he needed. But, yeah, totally to your point, it's like, yeah, this guy was, like, definitely sick as a child, had, like, mm-hmm. all these issues, and now here he is, just a, a top assassin, <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, but I guess maybe that gives credit to last week's episode when they said, you know, when they first met Jack the Ripper, and mm-hmm. he took them under their wing and, like, trained them how yeah. to kill more efficiently, but... No, totally to your point, Kayla. It's definitely getting to the point of not being as, like, what's the word I want to use? It's less mystery. It's more just, yeah. like, let us tell you what's happening and you can enjoy this banter. And I feel like I would prefer, and I feel like David mentioned this actually pretty early on in season one, of, like, I would prefer for them to actually, like, provide you some clues as to what's going on so we as the audience could try to deduct something and then yeah, have totally. these reveals at the end of the episode that's why, you know that's what why i mean I season one yeah yep. yeah no that and that for me it's like if not if not gonna do that mystery aspect at least have the death note my games but it didn't seem like we're doing that with with mm-hmm. sherlock and moriarty because they're not even fighting each other yet yeah mm-hmm. nope Yep. So, and they, it, it's too bad too because they went even, they strayed even further away from that than they were in season one. In season one, they, right. they still kind of leaned into that mystery a little bit. And I thought maybe, maybe they'll give us more of this deduction. But no, they, they went hard the other way. So, yeah. And now, you know, with the introduction of this new character, then that's probably not going to give any credit now. Now it's just a new character for him to do kind of his own thing and just mm-hmm. like share the story with us and not have us have any like, deep conversation about oh i wonder how, well, how this is going to unfold or oh i have these theories about this just like the both of you said so yeah again a little bit of a letdown but at this point you know it's that sunk cost fallacy mm-hmm. we've already stuck around <laughs> for this long might as well see you know the yep. conclusion of <laughs> pretty much sherlock Damn. and homes we're, we're all our <laughs> suckers um, for sunk in, cost <laughs> in anime i guess <laughs> yeah well some of us uh, some of us also drop real quick too <laughs> But I think that's gonna be yeah. it for yeah more already the Patriot. We'll see how this goes for the mystery continue on. Uh let's move on to our next show. I talked about Bakuten, more of your fun gymnastics. So I'm not gonna lie. I told Threaten this week that if um if it wasn't for the podcast, I would drop the show. <laughs> Um, I really want to like it so bad, and I think I'm being extra hard on it because I want it to be good, and it has all of the capabilities of being good, and it's just not. And the reasons that I feel this way are because there have been so many characters introduced and absolutely no reason to give a shit about any of them. They all have the same personality. We don't know any of their motivations, goals, fears, nothing. Like, they're all just completely static characters. 
It also feels like they literally like watched Haikyuu <laughs> and watched Yuri on Ice and then took yeah. down notes like, okay, we had an episode where they met the team. Now we need to have the banter episode, the next episode. And you have to have a similar person on each team because Haikyuu did it, you know, like it literally feels like that's what they're doing. And they're completely <laughs> missing like what made it actually funny or special. Yeah. Um, it's just, it's just, it's so close to being great. All these characters are so cute. The animation is, I think, phenomenal. I love it. It's just, I'd agree. I'm just really upset about the show, you guys. <laughs> yeah, it's like you said, There's you know, hope. it's a, it's a space that hasn't been, you know, really explored too much from a sports aspect, and the real pitfall mm -hmm. of it is they're following, you know, the motions they're taking from, mm -hmm. you know, the other more, more prominent shows. Yes, trying to. Yeah. Um, and, and like Taylor said, you know, the animation is really great. You know, they do have something special there in that regard. Um, and mm -hmm. I know, Sarah, you've been uh, obviously a big proponent of the soundtrack and music that we've gotten. Oh, yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. I've, I've enjoyed Solid. that as well. Um, and, you know, in a way, it, it kind of is them taking from these other shows because I'm pretty sure the composer is the Q <laughs> composer. So... It makes a lot of makes sense, sense of why, you know, we would like it there. But no, totally. When I was I was watching the episode this week, same exact thoughts of you, Taylor, where it's like, if it wasn't for the podcast, I'd be really on the fence just being like, all right, I'm ready to drop it. Like nothing really mm -hmm. special is happening, unfortunately. And even the whole reveal of, you know, oh, you know, our coach was a renowned, you know, um, dancer as well. I was just like. That's so cliche. Like, of course. I mean, That's you guys can still now. you can still drop it if you want. There's no, there's nothing yeah. tied to Bakuten. We might just downgrade it to like a shout out or something. I'm, like, I was counting too, like how many times they repeated certain jokes this episode. That joke about like the wife of that one guy, you know, that was three times this episode. And I love then, that one. Get, That's the one joke I love still. And then it was three or four times that they had the "Don't call me that" joke, and I was like, "Are yeah. you fucking kidding me? Like, can we be done with this?" Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 the only show I've really uh, ever noticed that, like to a, to a high degree, has been Black Clover. Where like they always be, just say like those dumb like, little jokes and similar running gags. Well, yeah, and I and I hate Black Clover from the beginning. So of course it's me. It's like <laughs> cringe as fuck, and it just feels like nails to a chalkboard every single time. Uh, I, think that's I think the thing that in a lot of a lot of anime manga, it's just, I mean, just like general. a lot of like, yeah. just running gags that like people don't know when mm -hmm. to stop or authors. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Auth right. Authors love running gags, so I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Definitely. Where Definitely unfortunate for me. I will say, and I, I know this is going to be a blasphemous take for anybody that's listening, but this is a show that I watch at two times speed, so that's why it has <laughs> it hasn't been as painful for me. So, uh, yeah. well, okay. So during like their uh, d during like their routines, do you act, do you slow it to normal stuff? During like, the routines, uh, I slow it to normal because okay. I'm I'm expecting you know some great music is going to okay. come along with it. Just... But other than that, when they're <laughs> You know, doing all like the conversations in like the the boarding house that they're at for this kind of training camp. That I'm just like, and then I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I reduced <laughs> 24 minutes to 12 minutes. <laughs> yeah, well, um, yeah, there you go. No, the like, I don't know, something, it's just something with their personalities. They, they just feel bland, fake, forced almost, and it doesn't have like that just normal charm that like that high cue just did. Just I, I like just like connection with everybody. Uh, I don't really know because there's another show we'll be talking about later on that I think like their like personality is just like like it just I don't know they just mesh uh, so well in uh, in in, in Kabaddi. Mm -hmm. like, I don't know and I don't know why, but it's uh, I don't know it's one of those like I still don't hate it, but I don't pay like that much too much attention to it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. yeah. We pretty much talked through this whole yeah, episode. I think we, I'm done. We had, a, we had a tough time focusing. <laughs> yeah, no, <I'm, laughs> no, my input is terrible, so uh, I think I'm good. <laughs> no, we're all at, we're all on the same page. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all we've got this week for Bakuten. <laughs> we all may right. or may not be talking about it next week. We may this or may, may not be watching. That'll it. be it for Bakuten. This may be the last time we hear about it. We gave it. We gave oh, it. It's, you know, it's fair shot. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's give it for Bakuten. Now we get to talk about Stren's other sports show this week, but Bernie could. Uh, Bobby, where's? Why don't you can you off that that <laughs> same earlier, Shred? No, but dude, Brain Kabaddi is uh, I like this is I don't know. It's something with like the characters' personalities, like how they mesh, how they get together. It it's not, it does it just I don't know. I, I don't know if it's just from like the style of the show. It just feels sounds natural, and I also just love it. I I, I really don't know why it's different. 
my you know? one question is is do you guys know how they play the game yet or no. is that still <laughs> it's it's like something new every single time even though like yeah, like mc's like uh his little slide kind of like slide like slide sidekick was pretty sick <laughs> the ron house kick yeah, yeah the ron house kick was awesome uh, no, no, we we get we get the gist of how the game is played. We just don't know all the rules, but you know enough to get the game going, right? To be uh, fair, we haven't seen a full game either. No, but they're oh, they're oh, doing oh, one right now. In a oh, sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, instead of yeah. a seven on seven, right, like a full team is seven on seven, they're doing a five on five. But basically, the rules are pretty much still the same. Okay. Uh, so I'm we're gonna... we're getting an actual game uh, started with the end of this episode and i'm assuming next week or the next two weeks it's going to be like an all-out match so mm. would it be right fair now? to say like with what you guys have been saying in previous weeks and sorry to cut you off sorry right. but uh does this show feel like it's obviously going to be much more about the characters and then the game just serves as like a a background focus i actually feel like it's completely even both yeah. ways i feel like okay. they're developing them both well I was going to say, because mm-hmm. cause m- most shows, like, you know, for the sport, they don't give you, like, about half the season explaining the sport to you, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> like, when we were at episode, was it four or five? And they're still giving us, like, like rules and things to the sport. Yeah, and I'm okay, okay. with that. The way that yeah. they're introducing the sport to you as they flesh out these characters and their backgrounds, I think they're kind of, like, meshing them well in a, in, in a good pace. Oh, yeah. So. Yeah. Well, and it's partly that they're not repeating stuff, really, that they already told you. They're, like, expecting mm-hmm. that you watched it and paid attention, and they're not being repetitive, which Haikyuu was guilty of. And then there's other shows that, in like... In season five. Season five. But in <laughs> season one and two, it wasn't as bad. You mean four. Or four. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I, I totally get where Taylor's coming from, though, because I think that was also kind of something in my mind of, like, you know... Do you just learn, you know, like five subsets of like moves that can be done in, in Kabaddi and then, you know, they really just rest on their laurels and like those things are kind of coming out like, you know, every other w- episode or every other week or whatever. But because uh, Haikyuu definitely had that, you know, it's like, OK, we have the quick attack. OK, we have, you know, this other attack and then that gets mm-hmm. rotated so often. But uh, mm-hmm. no, it's definitely interesting to hear that, like you're saying, Kuh, like that they're doing in a very tasteful manner of, you know, mm-hmm. letting the characters really flesh out these different rules and, and things of that nature. So that makes me more interested to eventually, you know, pick it up here once I do have more time in the in the the backlog of sorts. Yeah, yeah just forward. drop just drop Akutet, hop on over to Kabaddi. <laughs> more than willing to take you on, sir. Honestly, oh, okay, just, you're not watching it. Okay, that's why you're asking nope. the questions. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. I, I was like well, confused for a second. Facilitating good good discussion points. He's, but, no, he's yeah, helping like, this show today. Oh yeah, like honestly, yeah, honestly, Justin, uh, I, I think Kabaddi is. Where it's it's a much much more enjoyable than um yeah than uh than Bakuten. Bakuten. but uh yeah, good. Mm-hmm. there was um but I'm just telling you like the the, the character I'm gonna hate the most cool is that fucking guy that just holds his hand like out like it's just like like his hands like being possessed. like he's gonna do the racing on or something like, like... yeah he's basically like powering <laughs> up for something it's just like he's getting like a was yeah, it a he... ch- chinobu a chinobu or whatever yeah, uh, yeah. Chon- chonyobu chonyobu I, I don't know <laughs> but yeah this Chun- dude he's Chun-nibyo. a chunyobi chunyobi but yeah, this guy's a swimmer and he's the ace of the team. But he's constantly like, before he goes out there, he has his hand like this, and he <laughs> he acts like he's gonna do something crazy. But yeah. all he's doing is just just touching it, you. It back. reminds me. It reminds me of that one anime where the guy's like, where he's always talking about how his like hand is burning. Uh, David, I don't know. I'm pretty sure you remember the show. Uh, uh, was it Eno Battle? Yeah, Eno um, Battle. <laughs> the guy's just like, oh, dark, my hand dark, is possessed. Dark flame master. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's basically <laughs> or his hands like possessed. It's doing its own thing. Uh, yeah. He doesn't say anything like that, but it just reminds me of it. I'm like, I can't take this fucker seriously. I think it's so <laughs> funny that you both noticed that. And that drove you both crazy. And it started, yeah. if you hadn't said anything, I wouldn't have even noticed. <laughs> How can you not? That guy, every stance, he's not even playing the game. And I swear he's still holding his hand. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh... <laughs> it's just like, damn. But that's, uh, God, what, okay, so let's see what I'm trying to, I, that was basically a big part of it. Uh, I, I I still expect them to lose because we're they're they're like the second best team, uh, top four in the nation. Top four, okay. Yes. Yeah. So I, I'm just assuming they're going to lose unless like they get the uh you know the captain out. Uh, possibly, but it's not a full team either. Um, That's true too. No. But in most sport animes, once they do a match, they usually lose the first couple to kind of have it as a learning experience. Yep. And then they'll 
probably beat them in an actual match. So probably, but so far they're starting on a pretty good, uh, a pretty good run because I think it's like three to two right now or something like that. So uh, it, yeah, we'll we'll see. I assume it'll change. They're gonna get beat down. They're gonna swing the score because you know mm -hmm. they didn't expect to be this close. You know that that whole kind of shown in sport deal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, but the teams like you would think the the other team is really stacked, but I think it's actually pretty even, right? Because uh, you have the the captain of the other team, uh, who was on the the Japan's national youth team, and yeah. then you also have the captain of this team, who was also part of that uh, uh, of that uh, national team, and then you have the the two aces, right? You got the the guy who was number one in the swimming world uh, with the MC here, who was number four in soccer. Uh, I think the vice captain on his own is pretty strong. And they don't have any other, uh, they don't have any other players in, on the opponent team that that's been highlighted yet. So I, I think the teams are fairly evenly matched for yeah. this five on five. Another reason why I hate that sport, that uh, swimming guy, he basically says like, "Oh, I was the best." I was like, "Fucker, you're in high school. This is count. <laughs> hey, he has the point though. He was number one <laughs> in right? high school, not the pros, that, not that college, counts. nothing like it that. Totally counts. <laughs> yeah, come on." The guy's making it sound like you know he hit his ceiling. Get the, get out of here. Why, why, why do I hear this this hater coming in who's not number one? Uh... No, it's because <laughs> it's it's the same thing who like who you know the people who like love college sports. Uh -huh. That's like now it's like go to the get to the pros, then then I'll pay attention. It sounds terrible, yes. but that's kind of you know. My that, that that that's pretty bad. Yeah, it's pretty but, bad. I mean, I mean, he does have a good point, though. You know, it's like you know, I I quit. I'm playing Kabaddi now because I was number one in my world. Why yeah, did you quit soccer and join this world? You know. Yeah, yeah. For the first for story purposes, it's 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 right. it's fine. I mean, it um, makes sense to me. So yeah. Um. One one thing I'd actually like to ask Ayush is like, you know, when they go over the line, they they, they start saying kabaddi. Like, mm -hmm. you know, is is there like uh, restrictions on how fast you can say it, how slow you can say it? Uh, because some of these people, I swear, it's just like how slow they're saying it. They can easily just breathe. <laughs> you know. Because like they they because they, they say you know, they say you know kabaddi and then there's just like a long pause and they say it again I'm thinking, thinking like this fucker took a breath it's just, <laughs> but not actually but you know well that's uh, kind of in line with what I've been wondering this whole time which is how can they prove whether or not they were breathing yeah. I, I mean that's always one thing I've been I'm, wondering since the introduction of of like the first episode I'm assuming oh, they have yeah. to say it quicker uh that would that would be my guess I'm guessing they they have to constantly say it like you can't take a break nothing like that. That's what I would, yeah, that's what would make yeah. the most sense, unless they have them like, strapped to like some sort of like device. I, I did watch a few YouTube clips of Kabaddi, like oh. professional Kabaddi. Uh, there is a referee in the middle at all times, so I'm assuming you have to say it loud enough for the referee to hear it. And I'm assuming if the referee can't hear it, he'll call you out. I'm, flag, I'm assuming that's how it <laughs> Yellow flag, red flag. I mean, I, I, I guess uh, right, yeah. but I'm, I'm just saying soccer flags. <laughs> so... How did the real life yeah. matches look? cool like what was it oh, no, cards it's pretty intense <laughs> yeah i should check those out yeah i'm actually um, interested to do it's yeah but it's basically just rugby tag and dodgeball put into <laughs> a small ass court and then you have seven grown guys just like running at each other tackling each other and then like in the in in, in, in the anime you don't see them sh uh, like struggling like even if they're tackled uh they they kind of just take it right uh, mm -hmm. But in the in clips that I see, even if you're tackled, I guess as long as you can still say kabaddi, you see these guys like trying to like swing the body forward to reach, go back to their side of the field. Oh my god! <laughs> so basically, they'll keep going as long mm -hmm. as they can still say kabaddi, right? I think that's Man. when it, it's the over of the raid. So, yeah. Um, yeah, no, it seems pretty intense. I probably would never try it, but uh, it's it's interesting to say the least. How's this time more popular, and especially in the U.S.? You know, they like yeah, just right? reality. Like we have uh, wrestling and stuff like that. I feel like this, you know, this is like yeah, more rest, interesting than wrestling. Wrestling, we, wrestling's a drama. Not saying why rugby isn't more popular in the U.S. or why cricket isn't more popular. Yeah, good in the point. US. So, yeah, yeah. Hey, come on, get that out of here. I, I, I guess, I guess it just depends. It's just right? a like British thing, man. India, I believe. India. It's, yeah, this is India. India, India yeah. but yeah. Should, like, yeah. But, but anyway, you? I think I'm good. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm loving this show. <laughs> so, right. I can't wait for next week. I want to see so people fun. pop off, man. Yeah, it's I want to so see fun. what the guy's going to do when he keeps holding his hand like this. Like, what it means. Yeah, so. Maybe we'll see a little glimmer of light that just becomes a blue ball. Yes. Right. yes. So that's going to be it for Naruto. burning Kabaddi. 
uh, move on to our next show. Let's talk about Mashiro no Oto. Yes. So, yes. I actually like this episode a lot more than the previous ones, and she's gone. <laughs> so, and we don't I, need you, you uncultured <laughs> swine. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, it, it felt like one. It was um, I don't know. It was it's again like it was another kind of path that uh didn't really expect or didn't really even think about where it's just uh whereas in, in a sense like team play mm-hmm. where uh that again like that that song that him and that one dude played was mm-hmm. was really sick uh or it sounded really good um God, what, what it's... also just uh, i can't really stand the mom that's by far like my least favorite character um but uh my, my favorite is still his brother mm-hmm. his brother is like a or his older brother right. definitely a, a bro helping him through these situations but then to uh to kind of shine a bright light to the mom, I guess uh, we do know for sure now that uh, you know like the the grandpa who died that was like that was her father like yeah not yeah. her father in law yeah, yeah. but her father right yeah. so I can kind of see why uh, she's trying so hard to make like Setsu famous because apparently Setsu's grandfather wasn't some famous guy he wasn't yeah, like no, really famous yeah he was infamous if anything. And uh, she was like, you know, that's not right. This guy was so talented. He was so good. I need you to go out there and show them that, you know, the the Sawamura family or whatever, the Matsu, I forget what it was called. But then, mm-hmm. like, uh, that that this guy was the best. Uh, yeah. So I can kind of see where her motivation comes from. Right. So I don't, I don't blame her as much for all this. Yeah, it definitely gives a good picture, like you said, of her background. It makes sense of, like, why she's in the industry that mm-hmm. she is currently. Because, you know, before, like, when we saw that, we obviously had initial thoughts of, like, oh, you know, this is obviously like her just being super egotistical and, you know, both of the sons weren't really happy with what she was doing. But uh-huh. now to your point, now that we get that that deeper lore focus of what her true kind of initiatives are, it uh, makes her character a little bit better. But I can kind of agree with you too, Seren, and Like, she's just a bitch. <laughs> She has good intentions, but she still uses... But how she's doing it. How she's doing it. See, like the, the when, intentions when she's like, are. She's just like, you know, oh, Setsu. Oh, what, what do you mean you're not in the single player, you know, like tournament? You're doing the team what? tournament? Like, nah, fuck that, you know? And like, her response is like, power bomb him through like a table. Yeah. <laughs> Which is pretty um, sexy, not gonna lie. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, sexy. this might be a, a really dumb question, but do we know like how she became famous? Like, what was it, like the initial uh, thing that got her to stardom? We don't know. Okay. I'm just 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 her a, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just thought. Something in her body, oh, yeah. obviously. And, her, oh. Right. Singing? Are we really going with that? Look, you uncultured <laughs> swine. Okay, if opera can be a thing, I'm sure her thing is <sighs> the opera of Japan. All right, who knows? Yeah. Uh, and maybe I'm a little biased because we do have something similar to that in a monk culture, where they sing in this in the same style, in a sense. Mm. Uh, so if you don't understand, like, like, so I'm just going to say opera, right? Because that's probably the more well-known one. But if you don't mm-hmm. understand what they're singing about or what they're even saying, then I guess you can, I can understand why you think it's trash or you don't like it. But if you're, if you grew up in that world or you understand the uh, the meaning behind it, I guess there is an audience for it. Yeah. So I don't think it's trash. I just don't like it. <laughs> so it's just not, it's, it's not my it's thing. It's trash. No, no, no it's, it's just not my thing. <laughs> I, I can respect that. You know, people, people, have, people like their music. They have their things. It's just, I'm okay with uh-huh. it. I, I don't need it. Just give me my OST and we're fine. <laughs> you want that in the OST? Oof. No, nah, that's not 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 her uh, noises. Not her. We, 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 not we, we, we just, like... Yeah, yeah. I'll just like the <laughs> the, the other uh, stuff. Yeah, all the other, all the other good stuff. Except like just like the shout that they do, I'm perfectly mm-hmm. fine with that. You know, like when they either start it or like when they get, I don't know when or like why they actually uh, shout. Like you know where they do. Yeah, but it gives okay it a, a good, good, a good emphasis and hype towards like yeah. the transitions throughout mm-hmm. the song. Since you know, as we've seen, a lot of these songs are telling a story yeah. in sorts. Sure. Yeah. Um. So yeah, I think for me, um, I really like you know Setsu's continued growth that we mm-hmm. get to see where mm-hmm. um you know he's obviously now putting himself in the shoes of being a teacher where he was mm-hmm. saying you know he was always the one that was a student and learning things from those that you know already knew kind of what they were doing and now to have this team that are mm-hmm. all varying levels and him kind of bringing them up for this like shared focus i think that's really great 
Um, and, and yeah, and he, and he didn't. Um, and he wasn't taking it like out on them. He basically was blaming himself in a sense because you know, he was he's he's the one that's um you know supposed to be the teacher. He's supposed to be the one that's like helping them improve. But it's more of like him just not knowing what to do. He holds a very high standard for himself, and now he's you know overcoming yeah. those barriers. Um, I, I did really like though, and I think it's very fitting for you know music artists of how we learn that Setsu can't actually read like yeah. music because <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. I know there's a lot of people that when they play instruments, if they don't go down, you know, the traditional route, they just learn by listening and yeah. then they just figure, Oh yeah, I hold my hands here to play this note. So then when they had that moment, I was like, Oh, okay. Yeah. It just gives them more little sprinkles towards his background and gives more depth yeah. to his character versus I felt like in the, in the beginning we just said, Oh, Setsu's, you know, this like amazing prodigy that, can just copy anything and, and do anything and right you know mm -hmm. maybe it will get to that point once he steps into his own sound and he really just like goes off the rails <laughs> of what he really can do but at least in these last few episodes they've shown that it's not just going to be night and day you know flip of a switch it's yeah. going to have that meaningful progression so there's um uh the uh justin you said you you never you've never seen uh march comes in a line no. Okay. And um, then uh Ku, cool. then I also think like the like the way that they're showing like either uh, metaphors are becoming stronger. It, where it gives me like more of um uh March comes in like lion vibes where they basically say like oh like you know this reminds me of like you know like uh when they when they show like the music about how like they're like when like water's like dripping into a water like or when two drops are dripping into like a puddle type of thing uh -huh. but they're like in in harmony you know, like with uh -huh. uh, him and they're both like playing off each other not playing off each other but um that one uh that one guy was basically like following uh following setsu oh yeah seru yeah 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 mm -hmm. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Did, did i don't know if you get any of those kind of vibes watching the show uh well i mean i, I feel like it was it's not like uh, obviously as intense as march comes in like a lion but it, it it just reminded me of it yeah no i definitely thought it was well done and um I would need to see more though, just because it was only like a one-time oh, yeah. instance. Yeah, and they, when... they don't do it very often, but it just gives me the vibes every time I see it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, like I said, it's it's still on point though for sure. Uh, it, but I guess we'll have to see when it becomes more complex how it goes. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it but it wasn't Setsu that was. Uh, it wasn't Seru that was following Setsu. It was actually the other way around, apparently. Oh yeah, he's just playing like the basics, right? Yep. So I guess in a sense he was playing it to. Uh, like Seru was trying to do like as basic of a play as he can to get Seru to support him and make him sound better. And I think that's going to be the point of the competition, right? Yeah. You're going to have the other four people just try try the best to play the basics, but Setsu's going to be the guy that comes in and adds in this little flair be to make killer. them stand out, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's I, I felt like this sh like this episode uh, like just made this the series stronger. And it actually, you know, there's a an arc in a sense that we can go where where we're kind of past the training arc in a sense, or mm -hmm. him trying to figure out like we you know his sound because mm -hmm. he's actually like now um, doing like the the group play, and he's going to have to do the solo play as well. And then I'm sure we'll hear all about it again. But for the time yeah. being, this man is a uh, is a teacher. So indeed, you know, it'll yeah. be nuts though if uh, Setsu plays the the opener for the show <laughs> like in the competition. <laughs> <laughs> somehow ah <laughs> uh, yeah 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 i think that'd be pretty cool but uh i, I mean know. i'd be okay with it yeah uh but yeah, yeah. No, that's all i got pretty good episode yeah yeah it's maintaining for sure yeah, yeah. all right so that's gonna be it for mashio no oto move on to our next show let's talk about shadow house i'll leave oh, it a few years ah uh, dude i just i don't know this whole episode is basically just like just Fuck Barbie, man. She's such a bitch. That's all I can say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, she's not have... cute at all. <laughs> <laughs> we had our main guy, uh, Sean, you know, step up for Emilico and, and Ram. And, you know, their kind of uh, budding friendship in this episode, which I thought was really, really well done. Um, mm -hmm. Since, you know, in the beginning, we saw both of them obviously bearing being very reserved. One, Ram being the individual that she is, you know, really, really tough on herself and feel like she can't do anything right and then you have sean who is very kind uh, of like talking about rum. does things by the books oh rum sorry yeah, yeah thank you um but again you know i really enjoyed kind of the further background of the history of the shadow house that we get from this episode especially when 
rum goes missing and they're navigating through that one corridor that they learn has like all oh, these yeah. traps mixed in it and they had you know like the very visualized uh camera panning of the arrows like flying across <laughs> so mm-hmm. well um, and then in that scene too sorry to interrupt you no, but no, you're just, good uh, to that point um when sean had like at, at, at after those arrows fired he sat there and like forcibly chanted to himself something along the lines of like you know, don't bother yourself with like trivial matters. Yeah. I don't know what the exact quote was, but that's the yeah. sentiment. Basically, and yeah. he just kept on like chanting that to himself. So it's like they obviously know that like something's messed up, and they just keep telling themselves that because what else can they do? Um, so I like that little addition as as well. Like he seems like he knows a little bit more about some of the darker secrets of the house, even though he's a newer doll too. Yeah. And then apart from, you know, I, I share the same sentiment with Barbie just being an absolute bitch, for lack of the better words. But what about Ricky, the blonde haired well, doll he's just that we get into? Too, so. Yeah, I but feel it's, like it's he's like, a similar character. I'm, I feel like I'm not going to like his character because it's like one. He's, he's, he's either a product of his corresponding shadow figure, Patrick, that we just all we got is his name Patrick. in this episode. Yeah. So. <laughs> Um, I'll be interested to see kind of more about him, but I can definitely see him being the one that is going to be kind of this very like brown noser goody two shoes. And then maybe, you know, he has this character change throughout the series, but yeah, yeah. he's definitely a, 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 got introduced as a dick. <laughs> yeah. Like, hard to say. Definitely got some Draco Malfoy vibes off that guy. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm, I'm exactly. More, I'm curious, like what's going to happen to the debut? Because I don't know who, which of these masters haven't debuted yet, because I'm assuming Rum's master hasn't debuted yet. And I don't know if, if, uh, Ricky's master, Patrick, if he debuted yet, it sounds like, I don't know who's all new or not, but I don't yeah. know. Yeah, I don't know how that's going to tie in with like, I would assume that they haven't yet just going no, off no. of like the main characters that we see mm-hmm. in the opening. I'm sure like those five, kids that mm-hmm. we see they're going to be the ones that quote unquote debut with their mm-hmm. corresponding um shadow lord so yep that's what i was thinking too like i wonder like, is it only just one person that gets picked or i guess he's if you pass you get to all go oh, yeah, yeah i'm curious how that, that's how a, that a very valid question like what are the what are the ramifications too like if you don't pass what does that mean not only for the doll what does mm-hmm. that mean for the corresponding shadow lord mm-hmm. you know do they get changed back into a human do they get I don't, you know i don't think executed so cause, or because i one of the earlier episodes are they just we, like a we, super lower rank one of the early episodes we saw uh k and miracle so, uh, what they watched like yeah a master and the, sh- and the doll like walk outside so i don't think we get turned to human or whatever or maybe i could be wrong we'll see well, that was Barbie that they saw, right? Because that's what Barbie said when she saw Milico. She's like, oh, you're that girl that waved oh, was it Barbie? from the window. Okay, I didn't realize yeah. it was her. Never mind. Yeah. So. Um, um, then I don't know. I don't know no, if, uh, if, if like, was it, like, uh, was, who's, who's the other doll? Like, was it Sarah or, or Mia? I forgot the names, but, like, the kind of, like, brunette-looking doll mm-hmm. that, that she's trying to play with. They were, they were outside with her master. I didn't know if they debuted or not either so yeah definitely you know obviously still very much to learn and i think a lot of that to your point david will surround this debut as we get to learn what exactly goes into it and the you know results that will come from it um but again i think this is the show you know when taylor you were saying earlier for uh the moriarty this is you know the perfect show that's really making you kind of think and mm-hmm. wonder and and kind of theorize like okay you know what is going on here? What is at play? Like all those kind of thought provoking questions that makes this show really great. And so that's mm-hmm. why I, this is kind of still, I would say in my, one of my top three for this anime season. Yeah. This is how sure. good of a job it does of that, like suspense, but then also like mm-hmm. thought provoking. Mm-hmm. I just hope that later on, like when, cause that, that end part when uh, Kate was getting mad that, she, that Emilka wasn't spending time with her. I hope that doesn't, turns anything big because like yeah. it's just gonna be annoying when it becomes like the whole misunderstanding like oh like mm-hmm. or just like even just like her like being lonely or whatever just like not like i guess this is just with me like i really don't like it when when characters lack empathy so like i really don't like it when they don't see other characters point of view like how she's always busy and if she's just gotta go on that 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 tantrum again and just have all the soot so i hope yeah. it doesn't end up like that no, it's a very good point that you bring up because I think the last few episodes, as Emilico has been interacting with the other dolls, every time they do show Kate, they're specifically showing like the mm-hmm. soot just continuing mm-hmm. to, you know, 
Yeah. I, I actually head. kind of like that they're doing it that way in this anime, though, because I feel like it's going to serve a purpose. Like, I don't feel like it's in there just for needless drama. Um, I feel like there's a reason. I feel like it's supposed to express how uncertain these shadows are before they debut like kate to me seems almost just as clueless as amilico about a lot of things and i think that things like that just really underline that that fact you know what i mean her being lonely that amilico is not coming back and the fact that it really seems like amilico's the only person that she trusts and that she would consider possibly like a friend of sorts at least Mm -hmm. a confidant um so i feel like it's there for a purpose but I totally understand where you're coming from. Uh, that's too, that's it drives just me, crazy in other me shows. personally. Like I just, mm-hmm. just the, it's like a pet peeve of mine. Like in characters, like mm-hmm. lacking empathy. So mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Um, other than that, that's everything I, mean, I had. Um, I, I was just like, it's also with Barbie too. Just like her, like I don't know. It's just like that's her personality, or that's just her power tripping. Because if she has like some sort of important role in the story. And it's just like, like again, yeah, both, right? Both. And it's just again too how like when they find it in the end that like it was just like the the hinge like being rusty and breaking off. So technically it was no one's fault, but of course like they're just mm-hmm. they round over enough trying to do the blame game. And then they have the two the two mates too, like trying again, like put the blame on Rum because she's like quote unquote the most useless. Like again. Oh just... no, I'm I'm glad you did bring up the maid because I forgot the one um and I can't remember what the term was for them, the but the maids doll. yeah, the veiled dolls. That was a not a huge thing, but another thing that just adds to the layer of mystery of just like, damn, that's really creepy. You know, you have these veiled dolls just cruising through the house in the middle of the night, like Resident Evil style type stuff. <laughs> yeah. I, remember... I have a theory. I have a theory about oh, okay. them. And Go I ahead. think that they're the other I think they're the failed dolls. And I think that like uh... Uh, because they failed, their punishment is that their faces are destroyed since they couldn't be accurate faces Ooh, for the shadows. That would and that's be really cool. And then, <laughs> and then you can see. Oh, that would be a cool <laughs> reveal of sorts. Yeah. I like that a lot. So we'll see. Yeah, it's definitely dark. I mean, you know, kind of my last point from my end was for Rum, when Rum goes missing and, like, you know, she's talking to her finger as kind of, like, her imaginary, oh, like, safety blanket of sorts. And I'm just like, damn, shit's, shit's fucked I didn't up. Think, like, I, feel... I didn't think much about that, but, like, when you say it like that, it's just... Because, like, in other shows, it sounds so innocent, but then here, it's, like, it's always, there's always a dark undertone, so you can't, like, right? trust now anything. Now like, to the point of, you know, one, we see that all of the dolls really don't help rum out and she's constantly being like ragged on by Barbie. So now you have to think further when we get to see her shadow Lord, is that like another thing? Like is the shadow Lord also like mentally abusing her in ways that we haven't seen yet? And Oh man, I, I can't help but feel for rum. I feel like she's, Hopefully she she gets her well doesn't seem like her, you her... Know, positive outlook, but I can also see her being just a very tragic character that's yeah, really going to be put through. Her doesn't ringer. seem like even like her master mm-hmm. care about her. Like, they don't they didn't show her them talking. Really. It's just it's she Rum's just there just to do her job and just leave. So yeah. Well, but... you got to assume that there's got to be a fail. Oh, uh, sorry, a doll that's going to fail at the de- debut. Otherwise, they wouldn't be talking about failed dolls so much. Um, it's not going to be. It's definitely not going to be a Milico, and it's not going to be. Um, I'm sorry, the blonde one. Oh, Ricky. 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 And it's not going to be Ricky. It could be Sean, but I doubt it. So, like, my process of elimination, I think what, you're right. I think Rum is going to be the tragic character. What happens with failed dolls? We don't we know. We don't know. Tune in okay. next time, sir. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's why they're going to have to show it, right? One of them's got to fail. <laughs> exactly. So. I will be here. That's good. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, though. Again, doing all the things right, giving a lot of good suspense and mystery. And to David's point, you know, hopefully they just don't um, it's just, mess up is the right yeah. word. But just, you know, obviously we're we're holding a high standard for what we've seen so yeah. far. Yeah, so. just a lot. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of good things happening in the background that just makes us think. So really good. Mm-hmm. Although that mm-hmm. the, yeah. the was it the, the soot monster eating um like other girl's face still traumatizes me. Like that's I. I've never seen anything so creepy in, in, in a long time. Yeah. So maybe other people, show... maybe other people will enjoy that, but I, I do not want to see that again. Please no. <laughs> Wasn't the show uh, shown as a as a slice of life? It is. First, I thought it was first episode, but I got bamboozled. So it's a very, it's a very sick Man. slice of life. My enemy you list, know, so... everybody. My anime Bamboozled. list isn't always 100% accurate with their tags. <laughs> That's true, too. Oh, no. I'm change that. Oh, no. Stratton's favorite website failed him. 
Yeah, I don't even know what I would have done. Basically, if I'm one of those people, oh, I got a slice of life, I'm going to watch this, and then all of a sudden just become just he absolute an angry dark. review. I think, yeah. I, think it's a, I think it's a fair tag, because there is those more, like, it's upbeat like, of, like, yeah. Kate and the Milico having their positive interactions, Milico having positive interactions with the different doll characters, and, you know, the moment that they like, have with Sean when they started to bond like the... and everything, like... The creepy things happening in the background it is it is like a lie. Just yeah, you know, just yeah. It's lighthearted, but it's just like oh, oh shit, you know, something goes wrong and just you're fucking dead. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, not to be just, blunt, but that's what it is. One step higher than real life. <laughs> yeah, just ignore, ignore the creepy the creepy shadows flying around. Exactly, you're good. Easy. Um, yep. Looking forward to to more mm. quality content from yeah, this series. For sure. So that's give it for Shadow House. Move on to our Next show, uh, let's talk about VV. Oh lord! Did you guys Maybe. still not like this arc? I don't, know. Was, uh, I, I don't know what to think. I really, was, like I thought it was pretty cliche. Like, Music was man, good. Whatever, you guys are heartless. <laughs> heartless woman. That's an AI. All right. One don't thing worry is about that. <laughs> One thing is uh, that they kind of went with it is like Vivi. This is like one of the first times that Vivi didn't like fight, uh, like fight it. She basically just went with it. Like didn't try to, yeah. didn't try to save her. Didn't try to. I like, that too. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I don't know if that really. Uh, I don't know. I don't know if it's just like you know her kind of just trusting like the trusting the system in a sense, or just like uh, how she's just seeing how things are developing. Even though she seemed like she like. Uh, uh, I don't. I don't want to say like regretting, but she definitely was like it was recognizing like what she did, you know, towards the end. Obviously, <laughs> when uh, Dude, you know okay, he, uh, like, he who, uh, I guess I mean, yeah, you guys that it was cliche. So I guess you all called that that last well, part when 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 the guy shot himself, like it's because it was mm-hmm. pretty obvious. Well, I actually thought, um, you know, one, I thought Vivi was going to do something to save her. And then when she said like, "Oh, and like you know, basically priority is uh, you know humans," so I thought like, "Okay, maybe she's baiting Matsumoto." I don't know. I was like psyching. Yeah. I was like tricking my own, like myself and my, with uh, so many different things, just of, of like what could happen. And then and then until like you know, she just straight up just uh, uh, was it shot her fist right into the chest. I was like, "All right, well maybe oh, this no, isn't I'll, gonna I'll, happen." I'll talk about that when the guy talked when he when he shot himself in the head. That's like, I didn't I, oh. I didn't mean that part being cliche. I think for me the part that was cliche was that you know the person that was behind like the metal float was the original Grace. I kind mm-hmm. of had already thought that from last week's episode because oh. one of the last images was panning to you know the AI Grace in you know that like server area. So I was like, okay, obviously the Grace that we just met. Probably not the real Grace. I felt like that was a bit mm-hmm. cliche in that I regard. I just, um, I just didn't really see the point of like this arc. Like, I don't really get where it fits all in of like the main well, storyline. So the whole thing is they're basically just trying to you know uh, was it slow AI down? That's yeah, really I mean, I, I get to David's point. Like, I don't really Grace get the point of the arc from like yeah. the oh. um, from like the scientist perspective. Like, yes, I get he had this emotional attachment with you know this. Um, nurse figure that helped him you know w- overcome his trauma at a young age and then that kind of created that emotion between humans and ants i think it more as like a better progress of vivi and the toke uh like guy, oh, right. yeah. Yeah. him finally being like helping her out because he's realizing you know what what she's trying to achieve um the the other part that i really didn't care for i guess in this week's episode was when uh matsumoto you know, makes a bunch of himself and transforms into like the hover bike. Oh, and the hover bike's like bike. flying through, and I'm just like, all That's... right. They probably sat there and just like, all right, guys, like we got a fuck ton of budget. We got Wit Studio animating this. Like, how do we introduce some really badass scenes? Just like, all right, you know, we yeah. get Matsumoto to make a hover bike. Vivi flies through, like you know, all this very like sleek animated stuff, and I was just like, it, it I was, didn't really care for felt, that scene at all. Felt, I was yeah, like, yo, yeah. just get to the it, fucking core. It felt like yeah. very, very style and like no substance. Like, exactly. No. no. Legitimately, I thought that scene reminded me so much of Kingdom Hearts, like the gummy exactly. ship parts. In Kingdom exactly. Hearts. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Thank horrible. you. I've always hated the gummy ship parts. Why are you bringing this into my show? Wait, wait, well, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. Let's let's, let's do a little <laughs> sidetrack here. 
Why do you hate the gumship part? The gumship part it was probably one of the best things. Of oh King my Hearts. god! We oh, uh, you are just, I, I, I'm with Taylor on this one. No, especially King Hearts, King Hearts, King Hearts two, and King Hearts two. You could you could customize that shit way better. It, was, it actually like felt like this more of a point. The gummy ship served as a purpose to give Chip and Dale a reason to stay in the series. <laughs> yes. Other than that, there was no purpose. Hey, other two, than two was back fun, to Chip and but it was, Dale. it was kind of a waste. Yeah, it was. Yeah. There's a reason but, that they uh, changed the gummy ship and dream drop distance. It wasn't yes. obviously a better change, but they were just like, all right. But they can't tried. Keep doing yeah, they tried. Kingdom Hearts 2 did it right. I don't know why they changed it, but it was perfect in Kingdom Hearts 2. Yeah. Okay. Shame. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> yeah, back to, back to the show. We bought the box. We bought the box, though. I'm just saying. Yeah. We bought the box. The Kingdom, Kingdom Hearts did the gummy ships like right, but... Uh, this show did not. <laughs> no, well, I mean, I was just, happy about that. It, it was weird too because the sequence of it was was kind of just it just came out of like left field, right? Like all of a sudden, this guy can make multiple versions of themselves and make this like floating ship thing, and uh, apparently they knew exactly where to go. And then at the at somewhat towards the end, when they flew up the tower, uh, the scientists gave up and told them exactly where the core was. So I guess that was convenient. And then the music they didn't even. Uh, they didn't even, like extend it properly. They had to reloop the song that they were playing, and it was the exact same song. Yeah. So I was kind of hoping for like something else to play in the background, but uh, it, it kind of is what it is. Uh, so yeah, it was, it was definitely. I guess it was pretty, but um, yeah, I didn't really care much for it at, at the end. The only thing that it really uh, that that stood stood out to me was the fact that at the very end, yeah, right, I was the, the scientist that, yeah. shot himself. Yeah, and then you know, in the one hand in blue of the AI blood, and then the left hand now in red with the human blood. I felt like there's obviously yeah, some but that, that uh, there. whatever yeah. happened to Vivi though. It's like that's what I'm really curious about. So mm -hmm. that got my attention. So now I'm more excited for the next arc because curious yeah. where well, they go for that. I'm kind of hoping they don't just skip time right away. Like I actually I want to see like I, Vivi's reaction after. I think they're definitely going to skip time. See, I think so too, but I don't want them to do it. <laughs> Well, just because you said that, thing, right? now it's like a happen. The one thing that I will give them credit to, you know, apart from the time skips, is I'm glad that they did actually correlate um, the scientist's um, kind of relation with Grace, where yeah. the reason why Grace became, you know, the host of the metal float is because she was a, like, ancestor sister of Vivi and what happened with the sunrise explosion so i'm glad that you know everything is tying together from that standpoint mm -hmm. which i which i think is good it's not like you know you know separate event time skip separate event time skip all to like you know manipulate the relationship between AIs and stuff so mm -hmm. i do like that but um yeah we'll we'll have to see kind of i i agree with you guys where it's probably just gonna be another time skip and it's like okay you know because of these events this has had some impact on you know vivi or the world and stuff and then now we have this new event to take care of do you so. do you guys think it's just a coincidence that they like all the sisters just keep dying? No, I want to say Vivi, <laughs> okay. like like the the virus or whatever, or the one that orchestrated the the AI's like uprising, is either Vivi or just like her core program. I guess that's that's, yeah. that's, that's what I'm guessing. That, that's, that's what I was, what I was trying this episode too. I was, too. I was like, too. it's got to be that way. Yeah, right. Because as of right now, it looks like they're going to be four for four. So, and I the think... sneak peek for the next week's episode, you got another diva in a sense yeah, the that's going to be focused. Singer, right? So this is what the fourth generation yeah. of the the model that Vivi is, uh, like, I think like her, her model type. So one of us was saying in, in the beginning too, like this could be like a self fulfilling prophecy where Matsumoto goes back in time, but then like all the things they do just end up causing the Vivi, the past, to become like the, the AI that, that starts like the robot war. So. Yeah, that would make a lot of right. sense because you would think like Matsumoto would probably not ever think and Vivi herself would not ever think that Vivi is the one that, you know, caused all of this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And from the looks of it, it's accelerating. Like the fact that he went back in time, it's accelerating the process at which they do like become yep. capable to uprise yeah. and take over. So hmm. to be honest, I wouldn't blame her after what's been going on. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if in that instance, then I could see like if Vivi's not taking herself out, if Matsumoto will have some involvement, if Vivi is, you know, the true mastermind, and mm -hmm. he has to be the one that 
takes her out. <laughs> well, the thing I is, mean. though, Matsumoto is just following his orders, you know? So, in a sense, he's just following Vivi's, Vivi's order. So, then, if that were the case. That's also true, right? Yeah, we yeah, don't know yeah. if Vivi's also controlling him in some brain. So, it just seems like, yeah. Like the way you describe it, it seems like he's just, if you become a so much more important, like, have a more important role in the story, which just doesn't feel that way so far. I just feel like he's just, he's just like, a really, like, like, he's just a supportive character. It seems like, Vivi just, just does everything, even with all the support from Matsumoto. It just seems like I just can't see him like taking that that no, role, like I, having to I stop. I agree. He's, he definitely seems to take much more of a support character, especially in the last few episodes. Whereas yeah. when we first were introduced to him, we thought potentially, you know, oh, he has more of a main focus. But I agree. Mm. So, but That's I do like the theory about Vivi being the mastermind of it all, especially yeah. with all of the sisters in the relation. So, last thing I have to say is, uh, Rip. Bot number two hundred five. He was he was he was a good bot. He was rip, rip, he was all, those, rip all the near automata robots. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> See, I think that's why I'm enjoying this show a little bit more than you guys. Sorry, I'll just say that really quick. Is that I feel like I'm focusing a little bit more on like the human drama of each arc, or in this case, not necessarily human, but just like the mm -hmm. character drama of each episode or each arc, rather mm -hmm. than like getting stuck in the nuances of the plot. I'm kind of just like letting that ride. I'm not looking at it too closely and I'll, 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 I'll just see where it goes. I don't have strong opinions about how they're doing it one way or the other. I just focused more on the drama. So that made me sad. That's why I liked it. Cause I, I wasn't trying to predict what would happen to them. So I just felt I mean, sad. I felt yeah. so sad for all the near, near robots yeah. at the end. It was all touching moments, especially number 205, where they basically were just saying we're programmed that, you know, humans like surprises. <laughs> And I felt bad for the scientist, like, you know, he just had kind of a shit time his whole life. <laughs> like, I felt bad for them all. Yeah. Uh, he's yeah, like kind a of a creep, I'm not going to lie. That's... Jesus, so? I, wouldn't go, I wouldn't go that far. I know, Why right? Damn. He's a creep. <laughs> he's kind of a creep. <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Uh... Ku, if you could have, like, a hot AI girlfriend that you could marry, you're saying you wouldn't. I don't yeah. believe you for a second. <laughs> uh, yeah, me, 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 and, me and Taylor have already had this conversation. Yeah, we have. If AI ever becomes real, we'll separate. We both said yes. <laughs> At the end of the, the day, guys and girls, uh, it's not real, okay? It's all machinery. <laughs> Just keep okay. saying that, Ku. Just until, basically, like, until like, she gets taken away and has to, you know, run on a whole island. You know what? <laughs> we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Fair uh, enough. Fair enough. Like, cool. Okay. If this happens, I better be your best man. Look, look. You guys already know. I don't even know why you guys are questioning. <laughs> but I want to call this guy a creep because he kind of is a creep. Oh. I do get that. It kind of sucks that his mom, whatever, left him in a hospital, and then this guy like has mm -hmm. grace to like comfort the guy. But then you know, like he grew up, became a scientist, came back, and he was. He's been thinking of her like nonstop. That's that's a little bit creepy, even if it's an AI. Like imagine if it was like a regular human being, right? Like I still find I mean, it. To be I don't creepy. see. It creepy I find it more creepy. Like <laughs> I don't see creepy just because like there's so much like sci-fi movies about like people falling in love with AI. So I don't. It's just it's just that it's just that. Well, I think like, who is talking about like the age thing though, like him like like meeting her as like a kid and then marrying uh, her as an adult. Is that the part that creeps you out, or is it more the fact that she's an AI, or is it a combo of the two? Uh, it's a little bit of everything, and then just the mindset that you have to have to, to like follow through with it as well. I find it to be a little creepy. No, that's a good but... point because now that I do think about, it, think if they did get married, and then you know he continues out his life, and he's like an old like grandpa looking dude, and here he is mm -hmm. with his non aging <laughs> AI wife. It's just like oh, see, this okay. is a concept that I have been like exposed to since I was a small child with younger females, older male vampires. Like that's mm -hmm. the thing that's been around for a long time. So to me. It doesn't it's, even phase me. It's funny because it's, like it's the problem. constant defense of like when people have like attractions to certain female characters and they're in like a younger state, but they're like, oh no, it's fine. Like they're a 500 year old, you know, demon lord. <laughs> they, it's they, cool. They, we let it slide. They see Mano Katari. Yeah. yeah, right. But <laughs> yeah, but again, but again, boys and girls, it's, it's not real. It's all fake. So it's not real yet. Okay. Yes, yes. You keep telling Anyways, it off. Oh, looking right. forward um, to seeing where Vivi and her adventure takes. Yeah, I'm excited for the next arc. There too. So, I still love the, you know, I, I the know. I still love the show. Yeah, yeah. I still love I'm the just, show. Yeah, so we'll see what happens. That'll be it for Vivi. Uh, let's move on to the next show. Let's talk about 86. David, Oof. go for it. 
I mean, okay, I will say I'm glad that like they uh was they addressed the thing from last episode where the guy was like ranting off, so it was just it was just him. I mean, a lot of the other eighty six people still don't feel they don't like they don't feel that that um they they were they didn't want to feel that harsh, but they also like they weren't like on her side either. But I'm glad they addressed it, so like it's not too much of an issue like I made it last week. But it's just basically it's just like the reconciliation between the two sides, basically this whole episode, so but I know, yeah. I know, Ayush and other people said like uh, the anime has been doing really well adapting the the light novel, like almost, almost perfectly, like not leaving things out. So I oh, guess nice. I can see, I can see, like, like maybe some people feel like it might be like a little slower pace, but I, I'm still enjoying the show. But I do wish like we get more, like I, I, I think this is like past the first volume, volume of light novel. So I hope we get more into like more of the plot and more of like the lore. I think I think I'm I, I, think, okay with I, was, uh, I think I I I can see how how some people are kind of getting tired of like the character like drama and like just arguing back and forth between yeah. two sides. Well, the, the the thing with our, the the character drama is one I don't feel like we know the characters that well yet. Um, also, Taylor, you're two for two for your favorite announcing your favorite characters and having them die the, the next episode or the episode. <laughs> oh, was that was that your favorite character? The one uh, that died. The, well, the, 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 my favorite character from the first episode died the first episode, and then, yes, that girl then yeah. died in that episode, right? <laughs> and I was like, she's awesome. And then, like, 20 minutes later, she was dead. So I was like, great. So, okay. so Taylor's I'm the, the grim reaper of this, of this guy series. With the short hair. <laughs> I'm going to need you to stop. He, he gives all the death yeah. flags. Yeah, we're going to uh, uh, I'm gonna need you to not stop. Do that. <laughs> um, I, I think the thing that I really like from this episode is that, you know, we get to learn the, like, moniker that the one uh, guy took his, like, call sign from mm-hmm. and how he was actually a um, non-86. He was one of the... God, I'm going to always forget. What is the name of the silver hair? Uh, Alba. Alba? Alba. Alba. Alba or so, something? Yeah. And so make sure I didn't misunderstand correctly, but those were Albas that decided to come to the battlefield and fight mm-hmm. with them, right? Mm-hmm. Apparently, so that's what I, I really yeah. enjoyed because, at least from what we had originally been introduced, I thought, like... Um, Lena was like the only exception. It yeah. was like, oh, I want to stand up for more. Like everybody else was super just like, I don't give a fuck about, you know, anybody mm-hmm. else. Like I'm chilling in my Republic of Magnolia mm-hmm. having the great life. So um, I'm glad that we got to see that further insight. Um, mm-hmm. I liked the continued discussion with uh, Lena and her uncle and then her father. And we see, you know, at a young age, uh, Lena and her father went to one of these battlefields and Obviously, I assume that his father thought it wouldn't be as dangerous as it was, and that kind of led to his demise. Um, uh-huh. I think it would be fitting, too, that probably it was one of the 86 that killed him because they probably didn't know that he had a sentiment for the 86 as, you know, this high standing uh, colonel or whatever rank he was when he uh, when he died. Um, so that really drew me back in. And then the ending I thought was was really great, where. Um, you have that moment between um, Lena and Undertaker where she says, oh, you know, I never got to know your name. And then they realize that relation where Lena knew uh, his brother or that brother figure. Uh, all right. So I'm excited to see how that all comes together. Yeah, I'm excited to see it all, too. I'm excited to see a little bit more plot going forward. But I was telling certain I really like how they're handling basically like the topic of racism, really. Like, I feel like they're trying to handle it in a fairly nuanced way um like neither side is or especially like with the alba like they're even though the, even though they appreciate the fact that lena is like cares about them and is trying to reach out they're also still under, like they're explaining to her why the way that she's doing that doesn't really help them like they're kind of just helping her expand her mind a little bit and understand where they're coming from and i i'm not explaining it very well because it is kind of a nuanced subject but i like the fact that they're tackling it i think they're doing it pretty well i don't know do you guys have any thoughts on that yeah i, I mean no like I, it, I, I i felt I, like they went through it too fast like they they, they became too accepting you mm. know i don't think, I, I, uh, I, uh, I don't know if it's too accepting it's just it's just like i think they they understand that like like you know it's like it's like this whole like structural problem with the society and she's not like someone that they can just that, that's why they're being harsh to the theo guy because like because he was trying to like put the blame all on her when they they everyone else knows it's not it's not her fault and it's, it's not like something that she can do herself but she uh-huh. was being naive and so mm-hmm. they're trying to take it a stance of like look we understand that you're trying to help us but there's also things that you don't know about mm-hmm. about like the positions that we're all in so like yeah. and so they're taking taking this, this stance of, like we don't 
like hit you personally, but that mm-hmm. like there's so much like long standing grievances that like that you can't also mm-hmm. just come in here and just expect mm-hmm. us to like treat you like for us to, f- to forgive you for it all. Right. So there's there's bad blood on on both sides at the end of right. the day, regardless yeah, of where they stand. But that's exactly my point, right? Like it basically like became they became more trusting of her after one episode and nothing really happened after the the death of their comrade right yeah and, you know especially when it's a time of war and she's the sixth commander i believe mm-hmm. um that they've had i would imagine she would be required to do a lot more to gain their trust okay mm-hmm. now i know your name like we we cool now like are we all buddies yeah. like no mm-hmm. that should be the case right well i'm kind like, of I'm- I was hoping that it would like transcend to the point where she's like, okay, you know, I get it. Like me just talking to you every day is not gonna make us buddy buddy. Mm-hmm. I need to come out to the battlefield and lead the yeah. charge with you guys. That's yeah. that's kind of what well, I was expecting to well, see. I think I it's gonna know. lead to that. Yeah, exactly. Right. right. And right. I think it's obviously like a false kind of sense of truce. Like I really think that you know, now that Shin knows that relation with the older brother, I feel like it's gonna be something that either Lena's father or mm-hmm. somebody led the brother to his death and that's really going to cause another kind of like divide between maybe lena and Mm -hmm. shin or some other thing to your point of hopefully you know now just because they shared names you know it's like oh we're all gonna sit around our campfire and sing kumbaya (laughs) like that definitely doesn't seem you know the route that they're potentially going so i would at least hope for that that there's going to be that continued conflict i I think it is just because they they already mentioned too because because the one thing is she was, was mentioning like oh like what are your guys' names when the uh, when I think Theo was was the one that was basically you know bitching out about how you, you don't even know our names like right before that, so I feel I, I feel like they think of it as uh, it's just kind of a response to like how they reacted to her, so it's not like she's like it's not something that she just all like you know thought out of the blue. It was it was mainly them who brought it up, so and they they even kind of mentioned it too like that it doesn't seem like they're gonna just become buddy buddy just from that, but it, you know it's a, it's a start. Yeah. 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 I think if anything, that one Annette character has become like the weakest character for me. Like I don't really care about that, those interactions. Oh, the friend. Well, yeah. was it the net? Oh, the friend. Oh yeah, the, uh, the leader of the, the R and D. Sure, she like oh. fucking yeah. wasting pudding. She's just the one that's still just like stuck in the you know Kool Aid wow. mindset of just like, hey, like you know. They're not our problem. Like we're living the good life. Take a bite out of this she, flan. She, she has like the. the very, I actually like, kind like... of feel like I actually kind of feel like something bad happened to her. Like she is so forcefully in that opinion and so strongly mm-hmm. trying to per- turn Lena away. Like I feel like something bad happened to her, and now uh, she's like, I don't, that's uh, I, I could be wrong. Yeah, we just haven't seen enough of her. Yeah. I think she's she's very fair. cynical. Yeah. Like even if she like mm-hmm. she probably I don't know. probably thinks like what well, even like like. Maybe she just thinks that she's Lena's good... like very naive. Like she just doesn't want her to waste. Yeah, probably thinks wasting her time or whatever. Or she's a good counterpart for Lena, where Lena is very like naive, heroic, optimist, and then uh, to your point then, of Annette, yeah. where you know she is obviously more of a like reserved, pessimistic focus. But hopefully, to your like Taylor said, you know there is that reason for why she is that way. You know, hopefully she was burned badly in some way that led to that mentality well, and if, it, if that's not the case if it's not something that happened to her i hope that it kind of goes to the point where like i don't know what is supposed to be the main point of this show but i kind of hope would hope to see it come to the point where as lena is trying to instigate like societal change um and eliminate some of this racism have more equality all those kind of things I think it'd be interesting if she ultimately ended up having to reject her friend because her friend just wasn't willing to compromise or to understand the other side because sometimes that's something that has to happen in real life like you can't just like look the other way just because somebody's your friend you know what i mean you have to yeah at the same time you're well, still yeah you could uh, you, you, well, well you could but like i mean then you're not really believing in what you're saying you, you're believing in because you're still what's the word when you're enabling you're still enabling their beliefs you know mm-hmm. what i mean did you guys think she's she's still uh she's more of the mindset about how like she's just one person and how she's not going to change anything do you think she just has like that t- that sort of feeling, or do you think she's actually like there's a deeper, deeper uh, meaning to I her? She, like, I why she just blows everything day. off? I I don't. I'm the, I'm gonna think she's not not have the deeper meaning. I just think it's just part of just growing up in that society. Like even oh, if she okay, does okay. like think it's wrong, mm-hmm. I think like because even the uncle is mentioning too how like he was saying you know what what are our principles like freedom, equality, liberty, brotherhood, and he was saying yeah, well we don't have any of that. So what are you trying to do? 
And okay. that's a good point that you bring up because I was actually going to question for you guys. Like, if it's not things coming to a head at some point between, like, Lena and Annette in terms of, like, the questioning of their kind of ideologies, I feel like something's going to come up with Lena and her uncle. Because exactly to the, your kind of point, David, oh, yeah. like, it seems like the uncle understands what's going on, but he's kind of taken a firm mm -hmm. resolve of, like, hey, I'm, I'm, you know, Team Alba all the way. And I feel like that's going to come to a a divide or a conflict at some point as lena becomes more and more involved in the world of 86 Dude, yeah. what I if think... what if lena's father got mufasa right like what if it was okay, the uncle okay. that that killed like her father oh, oh, that'd be spicy. Ooh, ooh. That, that, that could be Move yeah, over the, Disney. The, true, the true father was always you know the top rank and the uncle was just like man this mofo i deserve to be king exactly that's like right you said, you he's know. too soft I we could, I could see that, hardcore. and then Lena learns, like, the truth through, you know, either Shin in the 86, because maybe that was something, like, with Shin's brother, mm -hmm. he had some involvement as well that led to that demise. Ooh, mm -hmm. that, would be, that would be spicy. Mr. Prophet, yes. let's hope, uh, hope we <laughs> uh, got it here. Uh, in, uh, in chat, Darren actually brought up a thing where he thinks, uh, where he said it could actually be, like, a Romeo Juliet, you who know, two love two societies who love each other, but kept them apart because of their different status or families. Yeah. Nah. Way to look at it as well. Oh, nah. you don't think so? Oh, okay. <laughs> it could, but yeah. I'm well, sorry. the one thing I will say is, I hope Lena and Shin don't end up being together. I don't think. I feel like, like they. That's well, us. Taylor's thoughts. I feel uh, like they're not the gonna, gonna end. end. I feel so like it's such an obvious trope. Yeah, I think it's gonna happen. Obvious. They got to go with the uh, obvious. Taylor, so, your thoughts? So lazy. Uh, my thought, I told Stratton that what I would want to happen from this season would oh, be Lord. for things to go in motion <laughs> um, and Lena to start focusing on starting some sort of a revolution or something along those lines. I'm not getting into like the political details of this. OK, she starts doing things on her end and yeah. also becomes closer and builds trust with like Shin and the rest of the team and things like that. And eventually things would escalate where. I was hoping that they would bring in the friend, that the friend would start getting more active as well in helping Lena, like somehow she'd come around. And then by the end of the season, I was thinking, okay, Shin's got to die. Everybody else has died. <laughs> like, died. Like, it's going to end with him dying and Lena going out to basically, like, be with, be with that team and fight with them, like, in his absence while, like, the friend still continued that back home or with, within Alba territory. I'd yeah. rather have that than ended the, with uh, him relationship yeah. between the two of <laughs> we'll them. We'll see. Yeah. I'm like just... I don't want him to die. I no, like no. him, but you know, I mean, I just feel like. <laughs> what if sense. she? What if she's the one that dies? Like, let's say if somehow, like earlier, you know, she, she moves up to the battlefield, she dies. I think she has a plot. I, armor. Armor. I can't, I can't see her not. dying. Mm. Mm. I'm just more but... wondering, like, how much of an impact is the Empire having all this? It seems like a lot of problems is with is with the Republic of, of that they're in. I don't know if like it just seems like the Empire is just just a backdrop just to have war. I don't know if they're actually going to go more into detail about the Empire or if they're actually going to have characters from there we're going to know about or anything. So, Sir, we... you... oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, when you have to use the term Empire, you know there's more shit. <laughs> I was no, just that's wondering... not it. I was just wondering, like, in terms of, like, the light novel and everything, like, is the light novel really long? Is it ongoing? Or... It's ongoing, definitely. It's ongoing. It just, I think it yeah. just, it just okay. came out, like, so this, the first so this is a show came out, like, probably... Three, four years ago, I want to say. Yeah. Okay, so this is the show then that's most likely going to get like multiple seasons and everything. Like, there's going to be a very we'll see. long <laughs> running. Yeah, we will see. Maybe. Because, yeah, I mean, they, you know, and I'm just curious because I didn't know how much source material there is to work with. Because then that kind of uh, brings the question of like, okay, you know, up. how many? Yep, yeah, same. How many issues or how many things are you trying to potentially tackle? Like Taylor said, you know, is it going to be the main focus of? um working to eliminate these you know divides and racism that currently populates this world and you know unifying together to fight against this common evil and, and not having you know the the different kind of rankings and groupings or is it going to be you know this season might be the mystery of what happened to the dad and then the next season is going to be you know lena getting involved out in the battlefield or just all these things i just don't know like how much there is to work with if uh, th there are nine light novels so far and it came out 2017 so holy shit no mm -hmm. okay <laughs> got a long ride then yep this yep. is I the mean, bad that, thing i'm not against just... it it's just that, that now widens my mind of like there has to be so many other things that are going to come into the mix now mm -hmm. if you have that much material yeah mm -hmm. well sure not not always light novels sometimes they do 
Dragon, so hope, I don't think this one will, because people a lot of people praise it. So I'm gonna I'm gonna trust the readers on this. So sounds good. Oh, just curious, Taylor, who was your next favorite character? Oh, guy, short <laughs> hair. He was in the thumbnail for the last week. He's nice. And then after that, it's the blue haired girl. Okay. Bluish black haired girl. It's to do with the spiky hair, like spiky blue hair, mm-hmm. and like very bright blue eyes. Mm-hmm. Okay. I will make sure not to follow them because they will probably die. <laughs> I do I do like uh the blue haired girl. Um I think Anju. Oh mm-hmm. well you better you better find a new waifu quick because oh, no, Anju, Anju is the one with like the whiter hair though, right? Is she like, white? Oh, she's like the longer is like silver purple hair yeah. or whatever. I like the one with like the black blue hair a little bit shorter. I don't know okay, anybody's I, name I yet. It's terrible. <laughs> we're oh. so bad, we're just like, oh you know, the guys <laughs> we're no better than Lena. <laughs> I know. I All was right. thinking that when they were going over it. <laughs> yeah, they're gonna die soon, guys. <laughs> all right we're gonna leave with that so that's gonna be 86 for the week we'll see who else gets to die later on move Ooh. on to our next show um let's talk about two-year eternity yes she's not dead boys she's alive <laughs> somehow got we got oh. coup back yeah, I, I, like, Lord. I like how they took forever to actually show that shot after the bear like did the swipe and like you see like the the older sister get knocked out, Dude. but they didn't show what happened to like the altar forever. <laughs> Unscathed, guys. I'll just say it. Like, I, even though like this show is supernatural <laughs> and all of that, and as we'll get hints of magic later, it's like her falling off the cliff is one thing. It's like okay, fine, like that'll be sore believable. But then like getting that swipe from the giant ass bear. And not gain like any injuries at all. That's I call BS on that. Yeah, That's like yeah. my one thing about this episode. Dude, every, every time like like the wolf was getting hit, it just looks so like just it just looked brutal every single uh-huh. time when that bear just this uh just hit him. But it didn't hit yeah. the it didn't hit the other girl at all. Like come on. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. It was really yeah. well done. You know the fight between um. God, what's the name that March gave him? Because I'm sure that's like his official um, name now. Fuchan. Fuchan. Because Fuchan. Fuchan. Something, yeah. Because yeah. Fushimi, but, um, I think, is yeah, immortal. Okay, Fushimi. So. But yeah, when, when Fushimi's fighting against, you know, uh, the big bear beast oracle creature or whatever, um, it was mm-hmm. really cool, you know, seeing that, you know, initial like power difference. And then as he's kind of continuing to attack, you see like one, his body, you know, continuing to regenerate, but then. I also took it as like now when he's fighting a being that is much stronger than him, it's the orb learning the like power differences. And in a way it was learning like, okay, there is, you know, this greater power that I've now experienced. And that's how it was able to beat the bear. Because otherwise I was just like, this motherfucker jumped on the bear, did its thing, bit the nose, and then it died because it ripped its nose off. I thought it was just because of stamina. I thought it was because, Basically. like, when he was buying into it, he like he could feel like the pain, like he understood like the bear is feeling pain. I thought that was the thing. Oh, oh, I, I have no know. idea about that one. I, I just assumed, yeah, that, yeah, it's just something guessing. along those lines. Oh, it either God, felt the right. pain or it felt the power that this beast had, and it took that power on so, its own. And basically, that's like, oh, shit, I forgot all about that. One. Basically, every time he bit into the bear, like, yeah, he got the the shivers like around his body. So yeah, yeah. they, they very the detailly like right. showed the shivers going yeah. through the entire body and like the fur like ruffling as it's attacking it. So to yeah. David's point, either is the feeling of that pain or the feeling of this, like strength yeah. that this beast has, and that's you know. If anyways, if, that. if anybody's listening to the podcast or watching this on YouTube, please let us know what that what, what that meant. Without um, spoiling, please. Yes, without spoiling anything more than that. No, I completely forgot about that. But I, the, the only thing I, 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 the only reason why I thought he beat he beat the bear was just because of stamina. I mean, he just continu- well, continues I mean, to regenerate. That, that too. Obviously, the bear can't do it. That and is yeah, that's very, the, the bear, and that, that's a very good point you bring up because we yeah. saw, you know, the bear has like a bunch of like, I don't know what those are, like spears or trees or something. No it's, <laughs> it's been beaten up after all these years, so obviously, you oh, know, it wasn't fighting at its like, you know, full. Dude abilities are full strength and it, like also to kind of talk about the bear thing i like how these people who are following this fucking like uh like this ritual they're like oh my god it does exist that's real <laughs> and then, yeah and they just they still go along with it <laughs> i mean i could say I mean, some I could people have that. never seen god but they still believe in it right so yeah i think uh, that i mean that, that, uh, why didn't really ordinary. I didn't understand that because, yeah, to, t- to see your points, right? Like, obviously, you know, this ritual has been carried out for years. And, you know, in this instance, it didn't go towards the normal, you know, run of rituals. But 
it kind of, to your point, did seem like nobody really knew about yeah. this giant bear. But then when they're there and doing that ritual, they had guards, like, up on the walls. So it's like... Oh, well, they didn't. Did they? No. Was it just spikes all along the round? And then literally when they close the door, everywhere. you can't see? I didn't see I think at the end, they had people at the top just because they wanted to see what, what, uh, what food did. I didn't see did. any other guards. I just saw the spikes, so... I'll have to, really yeah, sure, have to go back yeah. and look, but it did seem like something where it's just like I thought people were there too. Kind yeah. of odd that like, how do you not know about this big ass giant bear? Like nobody's ever seen it yet. You've done this tradition for years. I know, right? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I, I'd, I'd imagine if it's been going on for generations, right? Like the original guys figured out that to get this bear to stop coming to the village, they had to sacrifice one. That's mm -hmm. why they created this site for it, so they wouldn't see it and it wouldn't see them. But there's food there, and after yeah. it eats the sacrifice, it'll just it leave. changes. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, this, right. This so after that, after so many generations of doing that, it just becomes custom, and you just honestly, don't know if it's real or not. Dude, the size of that bear, no way that like he's just gonna be satisfied by a, like a little kid. Are you kidding me? I mean, I don't know if it's worked forever. Why? Why would it not work? <laughs> I mean, this time, honestly, right? I don't think I don't think the Dumb bear luck. is gonna be that important to the story. I think it's just this one oh, part. No. Oh no! I was just trying to make a point. It's just like weird, where it's like it. some people know the truth about it, but don't know these. But yeah, it was more the whole yeah. ritual. Me, that's me just overanalyzing because yeah. they haven't given me enough yet of like we, what the we future need to holds. Dwell so. too much into it, like it was just so. more the whole ritual religious yep. aspect part of it. Yeah, but it was more like we were nitpicking. Agreed. Um, I'll just but say, no, man, the bear's gone. That, the that one thing is like just just the ending is all I just gotta say. Just. You know, Joan just saying Arigato in that wolf, that wolf form. Oh, yeah. yeah I right. thought that was creepy. That was pretty <laughs> creepy. I was laughing. I don't know yeah. why. I just thought that was funny. <laughs> and like, and like, oh, we... like, kind of like a creepy, like, like this shouldn't be happening so away. So I should start laughing for some reason. The, the one thing we learned about Fu, though, is he's not just uh, stuck with his current state yeah. of uh, character. He can that actually too. morph back to previous stuff, at least. Uh -huh. Well, we just like, just, just turns into a rock one of these days. <laughs> what if he turns into the bear? He could. You know? What if he turns into a GD bear? I thought he was, like, was turning into the bear, like, during the fight. But yeah, I guess uh, I do. Yeah. I That's really didn't possible. know what to expect. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't know. Because like, I, I still don't know what the whole shivering thing meant. Yeah. You know? Maybe he, maybe he's learning ability. Maybe he just, you know, uh, maybe he went ditto on it and I, learned his... Uh, I felt know, like look. if he didn't turn into the bear during the fight, maybe like, it has to be a thing that's already dead before he can transform into it. Well, the the whole thing is because you know, like with like that great feeling or whatever, whatever it was that basically considers like the, the transformation. Maybe the that bear too. just really wanted to kill him, and then mm -hmm. or had that like hardcore feel. And then when he was just connected, maybe he just got the uh, he acquired that ability. Who knows? I'm sure we'll we'll get an explanation of it next episode because, like the narrator always says, it requires a lot of stimulation for you to change. Right. Yeah. And apparently he was stimulated quite a bit throughout the battle. So I'm sure oh God, yeah. next week's episode they'll show something that changed, other than the yeah. whole point that he's talking now. So I mean I mean it seemed like he died many, many times during the bear fight. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. Not that matters, but I, I, I went back and looked and they did have a little like platform that you can look at over the, the wall. Oh were, were, were people there too? Mm -hmm. Oh okay. Gotcha. Yeah. I, I remember yeah I remember they went to the top like for sure, you know, at the end, basically just to watch like the fight, but I, I couldn't remember yeah. before that. Well, no, 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 but yeah, it was just them that you know dropped our setup mark there. They ran right. up on the wall when they heard that kind of thing. But it's just weird to me of like, again, I want to continue over analyze it, but it's <laughs> no weird. If, like, if you've been doing <laughs> yeah. this for generations, how has nobody ever said anything? Either yeah, it's very just like shady, and nobody tells the truth. But it's like, mm -hmm. all right, you have a goddamn platform. You're telling me every time this monstrous bear came up, nobody ever looked to see what it was. I just... You're telling me that that monstrous bear didn't destroy that entire uh, area again. Yeah. I just don't feel like yep. we're gonna get the answer biggest to it. Critic. Yeah, I don't think we're gonna get answers. We're just gonna. Oh, I'm just. I'm. I'm, I'm just fine with it. Right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm just being overly critical because it's like this is what you've given me so far. So yeah, I'm gonna question what you've given me so far. <laughs> I'm surprised. Yeah. I'll, be no I'll, be, I'll be that asshole. <laughs> I'm surprised no one's questioned the fact that those bodyguards have like hair like all over yeah. their head and they can still team it's, how it's, it's that so, doesn't bother you guys because so that bothers bad. the shit out of so, me right it did like, i think i think i swear we mentioned it when the first time we saw it too i think we actually talked about it we're like we? this, okay. this is ridiculous ass looking guards yeah it's like who, who the hell comes I up mean, with that <laughs> i didn't pay attention because there's this weird this this weird story about this immortal orb that turns to a rock and then turns to a wolf and then turns to this guy. That's what I was paying attention to. No, that's all completely fine. Yeah, the other stuff, though, that's the stuff that matters, David. You're looking at the wrong thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but I'm actually interested. To see, I actually do want to see like the story of how uh, they go to this uh, just like a New normal, village. almost a normal think, village slash city slash is town. It a village or is it like yeah. a city? Like it seems like it looks like a city. It, it looks like big because they yeah. mentioned they, they mentioned the two regions. It's like it's like what what is like something like Yano Yano May and I think Min, Minna. I think I think they're in like mm-hmm. like the Minna. I think it's what the village people are in. I think where Hayase, I think where she's from is from the Yanome. So I think like mm. I think that I think like it's where they're going to that area next. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know like if it's like a village or like what or like a city, but Yeah. It definitely seemed more like a city because I think in the very end they're showing them like going to be in like a restaurant type setting mm. where they're talking to each other. So No, so, I'm 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 surprised that like that uh the highest actually took them in because now it just feels like she's actually gonna be like an important character in the story. I thought they were just gonna like I thought I mean, uh, why wouldn't I, she? He's um, he's immortal. I thought, like the I guy's immortal. Still, why I she's 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 important, but I think she's still gonna very be an evil character where like I thought she's just gonna leave They're them only bring after. they're only bringing Fu back because they've now figured out that okay, there is this other being that transforms into all these things and they're very curious about it, so I feel like they're going to bring him back and they're probably going to try to like torture him or do something to see what his abilities are. Yeah. And then he becomes a wizard and he learns how to shoot <laughs> fire out of his hands. Yes, well, yes, like yes, like yes. the opening, man. Like all the magic in the opening. Like I'm going to be honest with you guys. I hate the opening because it spoils so much. They need really to do does. like ReZero and just not have an opening. Maybe <laughs> once in a while, but no opening whatsoever. Because that I feel like that ruined the story for me in a sense. I would agree with that. We've basically seen probably what a lot of the arcs are going to comprise of. Mm-hmm. I don't know. For me, it's like there's just so much going on in the opening that like it's hard to pay attention to all of it. Yeah, uh, that's the same for again, me. It doesn't really bother me. I'm, like, I'm my own worst enemy. I will analyze yeah. every little thing and be like, all right. Yeah. It's like, I, oh, I know sh- that's I a point. I need to shut my brain off more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm my own, my own enemy here. I do it to myself. <laughs> I'm good but to go. It's frustrating. So, but anyways. Good episode, much yeah. better than last week, in my opinion. So, yeah, for sure, for sure. Even though, even though I'm still a fanboy for '86, this is still probably like my favorite show of the season. So it's, it's top. It's 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 up there. So that's gonna be it for our two year attorney. Uh, move on to our next show. We got Tokyo Revengers. Oof. I gotta say, Oof. Justin, like I'm still enjoying the show, and I still I believe in you. Say that it's all good. I'm just saying, like. Every time the time trial is mentioned, it's like it's like the one thing about this. Just like, <laughs> every time that gets mentioned, like yeah, the the rationale and the ability to come to the conclusions <laughs> that Naoto came to were very you know weak writing. But um, I think again, as I was saying, That's... like it really like the time travel serves as the means to you know tie together the yeah. the events that will occur between this ensemble of characters so that really is taking the background it's more just a means of transportation I mean, and i think like once you take that away then you're like okay cool even i care much more about the characters than time travel it wasn't even like naoto for me it was just like when um when they met like Auckland in like the, the truth house he like immediately jumped to the conclusion that it was the time travel i'm like yeah how, that was one part of the time how, how yeah. did all these characters like jump to that conclusion like oh like this thing I, I already happened. It must be time travel. I'm yeah. like, How must be. Like, yeah. what? I, 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 I told Taylor that too. I was like, well, what the fuck? I was like, why is your first thought time travel? <laughs> time travel. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, but I'll be say, fair, I don't know if it's going to be one of those things that is answered. It very well could be. Um, uh, and maybe like that hasn't occurred yet. Um, honestly, I don't, I don't really honestly remember what happened in like the middle, just because I'm reading mm. like the current chapters. But maybe <laughs> there is some background there. I don't know. That actually, I mean, besides that, I didn't really have too much other issues with the time travel, mainly because it's like we don't also we don't know like why Naoto is the one that for some reason he can travel with or time travel. He's like a he trigger. His hand. Yeah. Yeah, which is weird. It's just like why, why him? Um, it's a which well, I'm again, assuming again, and hoping that, that just goes back answered. to like all the stuff, like the time travel stuff. Just, just yeah, doesn't make much sense. But besides that, like I, we're still all enjoying the story. So, dude, I was actually interested, like with this time when he actually ch- jumped back to normal time. When I was first thought, when I when I first thought, like ah oh, fuck, I actually didn't want him to do that. But I then, didn't want uh, to do it either. Yeah. Yeah. But well, when I mean, he did he, it, he didn't. He didn't want to go back either. Uh, yeah, I know. Yeah, you know like, so he was trying to grab a, was, oh yeah, my god! That was the girl's hand, and he's like, "Nota, what the fuck?" Like, no. Dude, I, I called that too before they even showed the person. I was like, 
it's it's Naoto. And it was. Yeah. And but I didn't I got... think about how just holding his fucking hand sends him back. I was like, fuck. Almost called it. But uh no, but the whole thing now it's not but what I actually like uh like about the where like where the story is going, it's not just about the girl anymore now. It's he's wanting to save because when we first saw him, like I just thought, like, dude, this guy just looks sick. Like, he, like not in a good sick. Like, he just looks. No, yeah. Oh, about, like, he's, he's obviously look... he's been made to do some very <laughs> like, like dark yeah. things. Yeah. yeah, he kind of yeah. he kind of alluded to it too when you know yeah. they were talking on the roof of, um, just how he had known that the girlfriend had been killed and that, mm-hmm. um, you know, the the brother was a police officer and you know, um, Takamichi was like, how do you know all this? And he's like, that's just the power Tokyo Manju has. Like, Toman knows everything. They are well connected, and there's a reason why yeah. they're able to do what they do in this current time. Yeah. When they um, were um saying all the names, though, I had to go back and look at it up. Like, I didn't know who the hell Draken was, and like, I just the other go. people. It's like, <laughs> you don't know who Draken was. No, I, Dude, Draken's like the only one I well, remember. They, yeah. they gave him a dragon tattoo yeah. on the side on of the his side, head. bro. What? Draken, Draken was the only guy I remembered just because I of uh, Mikey. Because of his reason, name. I, I couldn't remember Draken, and then like. <laughs> And but no, that's the thing. Like, the you guy, will get to know all the, the characters as I'm time sure, comes. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the main, the main villain they're talking about is like the glasses guy. But like, I, yep. I took oh, me all to, to get that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. I already forgot his name. So it took me a while to remember these names, but yeah. he's not glasses. Kun. Well, so so what did you think about you know Akun and him taking his his leap off the edge I, of the? I, I, did you I, have again. like much feeling for it, or is it kind of just like a oh damn? It's like, kind of dramatic, but I understand. Like. I there are probably like a lot of things in in the history that we don't see, but I can understand like someone like being so scared of of like you're a gang leader that's above you and like, you just feel you're trapped in this life. So I, I totally understand his action, but it just felt from the viewer's perspective, it just felt dramatic. Because it's like eh. the first thing we see in I'm the getting a feeling I'm getting the feeling that uh, Takemichi is not the only one that can time travel. There has to be someone else that can time travel as well. I mean, I mean, the, 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 the fact <laughs> the fact that you're you're able to just like oh you can time travel like that's that's the only I mean, explanation last, you can time travel last, right so I, th- I thought it makes Mikey it seem like it's just basic the other time travel because he was yeah, like was he was like ta- ta- like he was telling to Takemichi like something he was mentioning about that like, you said again as if as in saying like that's suspicious and uh-huh. yeah so I I think it's Mikey that's the other time traveler. Hmm. Um, so the, when, the whole thing with it being dramatic, one I actually uh, basically, I, I thought like when I went to the roof, I was like, this man's jumping, and there was no even signs he was gonna jump, and he jumped. And then yeah. the second, the second thing was about the whole thing is like now with uh, with you know, going through t- like or going back through time, like when somebody dies, I actually don't feel like they're dead, it's more of like they can go mm-hmm. back and pre- like try you know, do something to, to attempt to prevent it, so yeah. it's, it doesn't, sure. doesn't make it permanent. I found so it way the, more traumatic just seeing that change from when he was young to when he was older, and you see him so gaunt. Oh God, dude! <laughs> I was I actually, like, oh, that, that, was, that was traumatizing. I felt, I felt way worse about that than actually watching yeah. his death because he just looked he just yeah. looked terrible. And yeah. kids, this is why you don't do drugs. Dude, a lot of other things. That, that sounds like okay, that man like, had to do a lot of shit. Everything he did to get to where he was, like he that was not of his own choosing. <laughs> yeah, just oh, like, oh, this is the life for me. I just remember uh-huh. too, like in that rooftop too, the glasses guy was there watching the whole thing. So does he now mm-hmm. know that Takemichi can time travel and he's got well, fucking? Well, did he already know though? Because like, why else would he have? Why like why else would he have um him push him like into the train? Like mm-hmm. like like what would be the reasoning for that? Yeah, I think yeah, he had to have been reason. Reason. Yeah. seem surprised. Yeah, because you know? right. yeah. you're not just gonna like never see this guy like since middle school and be like, you know what? I'm just gonna run into this motherfucker at the train station and push his ass into the train. Yeah, yeah. right. <laughs> well, so. I think it's more so too of kind of the point where he says, you know, how well connected Toman is, and they probably thought like they had to cut off all loose ends that were related to this one girl, you know, that that got killed. Yeah, because so we probably don't... were thinking like, oh, you know. Takamichi, yeah. you know, had feelings for this girl back when they were in middle school, and well, and, and, and basically just oh, eliminate anybody who's a loose end. I feel like that's a very common like gang tactic. Oh, yeah, yeah and, the, and you're that well connected. And the thing is, he is changing time as well. Like he is actually changing like what's happening, like with the timeline. So but we don't subtle. know. Yeah, Apparently, it, it's, it's subtle. It's, it's subtle, but this is also going over twelve years. Yeah, right. so we also right. don't know like what led to Akun still going the route of joining. Toman, because yeah, what you're saying before, like originally, because Takamichi didn't um, like win the fight against the gang leader, Akun went forward and like stabbed him 
Uh-huh. Yeah. And then yeah. that, like, potentially now didn't happen, so... And it's the thing that comes to time travel. Change. There's so many, yeah, subtleties and things that, yeah. you know, now can just be manipulated, so... Yeah, I mean, that's a fairly big change from stabbing a guy to not stabbing him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so. yeah. Because yeah. then I, I want to say the other guys in the group too, like Tachimichi's group. I'm sure they'll be a like major role in this too now in the present well, time. So but, mm. well, the one thing, sorry, before I forget again, um, because the current timeline as well, um, you know, MC is friends with Mikey and uh, and Draken. So it, which he mm. wasn't originally. Remember, he basically was right. just like a bitch, you know, for those other that other dude, and mm-hmm. that's like where the timeline went. So now. So oh, now like, the timeline true, is he's true. So now the timeline is he's in that group. So in a sense, he would have a mark on his head. So that would make sense and like why he would why would he would want him to go out and push him mm-hmm. into the train? Mm-hmm. I think that's that's kind of like what but, I have. But yeah, but you're, you're saying that that like he was already a target before he time traveled. So we don't know like. Yeah. Well, we don't know because it could have like, because who pushed him could have been different. Or what yeah, happened could have been different. That too, but I think he, I thought you were jumping to the conclusion that like because oh no no what happened no past, I was that... just saying. Well, I guess then the question kind of becomes to your point, sort of like what we as viewers were originally shown was that even like the original timeline? Oh, I have like, no yeah, idea. You know, it's, you know, <laughs> yeah. you would think like that's the first thing I'm shown as a viewer. And yeah, this is not me spoiling. I have no idea, honestly, because mm-hmm. um, that hasn't even really been concluded because the series yeah. is still ongoing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but yeah, it's kind of one of those things that does now come with with time travel of just like, you know, there yeah. is no original timeline anymore. <laughs> yeah, right. No, I, I do feel like the the person who originally pushed him for what we saw was different. So yeah. I, what if, I, I don't think it was him. What if it was Hina all along, and she's mad <laughs> she's, because she's he, he, he left her, but she was already <laughs> he, dead. He left her. <laughs> No, 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 but it was a it was a fake. She's she's a top oh. boss now, but she had a fake her own death. Oh right? yeah, she has, a, she has a, a body that's, double. That's the one thing that Sasha texted me in terms of his like thoughts and stuff. He's oh my god. Like, he's like, man, oh what god. if Ian is the true leader of Toman? So oh he god. already knows. Damn, man. Girls are crazy, man. Oh you, don't, you don't just leave a girl alone I, and expect like it to go on skate. Who and Sasha on the same wavelength? Wavelength. I mean, she was the one that really just you know bitch slapped Mikey and had you know no fear. Oh god. Uh, yeah. But no, I actually, after that one episode, the, the second episode, I thought, like, oh my god, this show is going to be brutal for me to get through. Now, I, I'm with you, Justin. I'm actually I'm actually hey, interested hey, in a time I, travel I, show, which I, normally I doesn't happen. all along, all right? I'm still yeah, following. I, think, well, I, think I was still loyal, but I just, I, I just, again, you know. I, I think it's easy for me because obviously, you know, I've read to where we're at right now, but um, I'm glad to hear from your guys' perspective, even with stuff that admittedly I, I would think if i was watching this for the first time to your point david i would totally think like okay you know the, the logic behind how they figure I'm out the saying, time travel very weak i'm the, just letting that go now <laughs> well the other thing too and, and not that it matters this is me just nitpicking so it literally doesn't matter but the fact that akun didn't change his phone number after all these years <laughs> it's just one of those conveniences hey some, <laughs> hey i still have my phone number after the past like 10 years so it's real yeah. yeah. Sometimes Lord. when you know when you have connections, it's a lot easier to just keep just keep the phone number. Hey. All right. <laughs> oh Lord, um, you're that guy. Nah, that honestly, guy. honestly, uh, to be fair, I, I think I would, he would have changed his number by yeah, now. But, honestly, yeah, we'll uh, this episode, like I, um, I was it. I liked how well because this whole time, like uh, Takemi's just being really naive about the whole thing. So I like how like it was really emotional like development for him this episode. So. I think we're gonna see, even though like he came back and everyone kept saying like you know he's like he's changed. I think he's just gonna change again and realize the seriousness of all this. So I really like how this episode was for his character development. Yeah. So. Show's picking up. Yeah. It was yeah. also nice to see like MC like where he's he doesn't just want to save the girl now he actually wants to save everybody. Yeah. Kind of. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that, that was like, that was pretty cool. There's like more at stake now. So. A lot more things he has to do to change, to actually change to make sure everybody gets out alive. Uh-huh. And the thing is, he also has to change, like, um, his, uh, God, sorry, I, I think you guys have said his name multiple times, but the redheaded guy has, like, one of his, like, be- best friends and better friends. Uh-huh. Yeah, he basically has to, like, change, like, his way of, like, his way of life in a sense, too, so he doesn't end up, uh, in that way, too. Yeah. Not just, not just save him, but also have to, like, change that part. Which is like that, gets, that could get really messy. So much stuff, man. You it's, have it's so crazy. much stuff that you have to worry yeah. about, and you're just one person. I'm actually, I'm actually uh, looking forward to uh, what ends up happening. 
Also, shout out to the OP, man. I, I love this OP. Like, me hyped every time the episode starts. <laughs> I have to listen to it again. But uh, I don't hate it, I don't think. You don't think? Mm. I don't think. I can't yeah, remember. Like... <laughs> Jazzy, but uh, yet yeah, heavy. Oh, right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah. I'm okay yeah, with the opening with, like, like the, that, the first, like, two yeah. seconds, like, always gets in my head after I watch an episode, mm-hmm. so... All right, so I think that's going to be it for Tokyo Revengers. Uh, and right there, we'll move on to our next show. Let's, talk about, let's try to talk about My Hero Academia. Oh, God. <laughs> it's happening, guys. Two no. episodes per fight. No, I, yeah. No. Well, not even, just, not even just a fight, but a fucking, it felt almost pointless. Like It's just like, <laughs> you have a fight of a fucking mushroom chick that she just basically just sprouts mushrooms. Like, she's just... Shooting a like water spray gun. I mean, hey, hey she's actually mushroom. she's actually thought, secretly OP. I thought the, like, I thought she were to be assassin, she's pretty strong. I, mean, I, I thought yeah, mushroom yeah. was actually cool. I was more by by the, the fucking comic book guy who just says like that sound. That was so bad, so like, bad. I thought that was just stupid. <laughs> so bad. <laughs> yeah, that was. Uh, I, I immediately thought like, well, like who in the hell would come up with anything like that? Like a manga I, I can't even think author, of, that's yeah. who. Yeah, like, the, the thing is, like, also, I mean, we've we've seen like ridiculous ass quirks. Like, who the hell just thinks like I'm gonna make this guy like just shout comics. Like comic things, a comic like, author or manga author. Are you, oh are you guys? I, I, are you guys forgetting about Vinegar see, Boy? I, I took that as more of a joke. <laughs> he's, like, he's, I, like, I don't know. That's more funny. Is, this is just more lame. But like, I, I took it as more of like a joke. But then at the same time, they lost to them. I'm thinking, are you fucking kidding me? Like, how <laughs> do you lose to basically like a, a team that we will n- most likely never see again? Besides, like the giant fist girl, maybe Shadow Guy. I can't see we ever see like the mushroom chick or the comic guy again. No, no, no. So, so to be fair, right? Like the mushroom girl, like I said, I did not think that they would take that dark route where she can plant mushrooms in your lungs. There is well, no counter counter to that. I, for that, I, I think it depends on also like the situation you'd be you'd be in. I mean, they're around like a giant fortress of everything around. If they're they're out like in the middle of like a field, I don't think she'd be able to do it. It's it's your lungs, threatened. There's it's it's damp. It's dark. Like. Mush, if she can, she can do it whenever she pleases. For sure. I, I mean, I, I still think she'd be able, like one shot. <laughs> no, for sure. But like I said, she would be well, more of a like so a, are, like an so assassin. A lot of the other guys. heroes are one shot too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I and then but and the then the dark well, guy, he's he's pretty strong as well. And then Kendo, she's pretty strong on her own. So it wasn't that bad of a matchup, to be honest. So so what else did they have to do then, where it didn't affect the other members of her team, like for the lungs, because the other team, like they they got that stuff, so they the wouldn't be affected by it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So okay. On the so outside. Just, yeah. On, yeah. On the so, outside. Yeah. So I wonder what the hell they did then to prep, you know, for because the because she, she just basically spammed the mushrooms, whereas like the poison was a very target towards. Uh, a to- See, I don't a to- like that. What? How the fuck is she going to target that shit? You know. Well, like, he was literally right there. Yeah. But everybody else was though, and only he got affected by it because she targeted him. Uh, no, because she she activated Dude, it. It wasn't something shit. that she was going to use. <laughs> I mean, it's 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 whatever, but it, it's something logic, that she was forced to use. The logic of the bitch was just terrible. <laughs> like, like, um, but no, that, like watching this episode just makes me think, like, why why do I have like a, a figure shelf dedicated to hero? <laughs> but the, I heard though, like, like I, I don't think I hated, and that's why. But I don't think I hated another episode more than this episode, so it, it only can go up from here. Holy but, crap! <laughs> but I just wanted to get through this. I actually no, no, like Gentle we, Criminal. We, like, we got, towards the end, like, got, the, the result, another, like, resolution. You got another yeah, fight, sir. Gentle yeah, Criminal. Yeah, you got a, you got <laughs> a little got, bit. You I'll got be, Todoroki versus some other Class B people. I'll that, be honest. See, now that that'll I be better. It, I feel like this was one of the arcs that, when I did decide to read the manga, it got to this point, and then I literally took a break from the manga. It was just like... <laughs> Did okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna wait for you know these to come out for a few weeks and then I went back to when it gets good again. <laughs> so for the manga, yep. did they have the comic guy there too? Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. everything everything oh, is being adapted oh, exactly yeah. as it happened. It's just one of those yeah, things okay. where I guess it's been nice to have that option of okay, I'll just you know wait for it to get some running room so that I'm not you know. I guess it's it's just a thing of like setting your expectations realistically each week. Yeah. And I think you know all you guys have seemed to now do that with kind of what we're covering right now. So well, it just it feels like cuz like you know they're they're supposed to be like the hero class it's, um it, it's definitely a valley of the series in my opinion. Yeah. yeah. And shonen's always have you know these very 
undulating it's peaks like, and valleys. So it's easy yeah. to be like, oh, I always, you know, come in at the peaks and stuff. But... Just, yeah, it feels like there's an equivalent of the training arc. So, like, I'm not gonna, yeah. I'm just, that's why I'm just waiting yeah, feels... for this to be over. It's, just... yep. it's it feels just patience. So that's all it is. It feels patience. so bad because it's like you have, like, where you think, like, are these top tier guys with, uh, Yo, uh, I can't pronounce her name. It's called her, um, what, Momo. Just called her Momo. Oh. Yeah, Momo. Oh. With uh, basically Momo and um, and the other guy's name, and so no. we like, <laughs> oh, oh, the guy. We have like these uh, like, you know, like o- like OP kind of characters, and you're losing to all like, like just literal trash. Like you you lost to a comic guy. And, you know and, who and, I blame? Invisible girl. She's utter trash. That's who I blame for the loss of this fight. Oh, she really. He just reflected yeah. light. This yeah, fight. That's all she, she can do is basically just to fly. Like she just has a solar flare, and that's about she it. didn't do anything. Like she had one job to defeat the comic book guy. She couldn't even do that. Yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, the fact that she is fully invisible, and they don't really have a character that can detect. You know, like yeah, and then, to your point, she could like, just take her gloves and shoes off, and then <laughs> sneak uh-huh. behind enemy lines and yeah, like, like oh, it's Creed. Just yeah, 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 yeah. The bigger picture that was just an awful fight. Like. I'm, I'm just hoping, like, basically, we're we're past that, and then we're they're just yeah. better ones from now on. To be fair, I remember it as one of probably the weakest fights of no, this tournament. Yeah, so. was awful. Like, 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 already the fight was like bad in general, and at the, then you're just gonna like demean these people by making them lose to this shit. <laughs> it's just it's one of those things that I can't help but it's like the author has to do it because it's like you have to, you want to give every character you know their their just ends, but then yes. it really is that moment that when you lead up to that and you're like before that you're just like. Oh okay. man, like I really want them to focus on other characters other than you know the usual Deku Bakugo. But then you get that, and you're just like, oh fuck, I didn't want this. <laughs> oh, I, well, it's I, like I, they picked the most absolute boring way to like <laughs> evaluate those characters and I didn't bring even more want to them, them. To focus on Class B because I feel like we still need more focus yeah. on the cl- other Class A yes. besides the, yeah. the Trinity. Correct. So yeah, yeah. it just feels like Correct. it's just diluting the diluting like the characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oof. Yeah. So. Hopefully, um, maybe so. three more episodes. Yeah, so. that's what maybe I think. Maybe four. About three. three or yeah. four. No, nope. yeah. two yeah. per battle. Two per team battle. Two per team battle. Yeah, they could stretch some stuff out as well if they want to just make it reach like the halfway mark for the oh, season. So, again, this, this, that would be, this, that would be this, so this, painful. This is, this is a shonen, so I'm, um, you know, just taking it as it is. Just as I said just, since the beginning of the season. Unless we forget I'm Dragon Ball waiting. Z. I'm oh, just God. waiting for the school stuff to be over. Um, the one, the one thing I actually hate, like talking about repetition, is basically when Vlad's bias commentary. That yeah. that that's actually getting annoying. It's uh, gag, yeah. Also, yeah. The, the, also I hate like 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 how much time Hero Academia is wasting at the beginning to recap. Oh my that's god, show, yes. that's so in every Normally, but Hero's never been like that bad at it. And then this season, they're just it. They're bad at it. It's yeah. uh, it's it's, it's, it's like. It's like I'm like when I'm, when I'm watching Digimon. I just skip like five minutes in, and it's like I just started the episode. <laughs> it's not that bad, but I mean, it, it, it's not all, you can, all, you can that, always yeah. watch it at two times speed. Uh, it's, see, I, I still <laughs> want to like you. <laughs> like, like, I think, like, sure, I we, think we just gotta get past this part, and we'll just forget about yeah. it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. that's what they're saying. Like you can you can basically feel the room like when you get into the episode, and then it's like, all right, mm-hmm. I want to save some time. Yeah. But it's just wait. It's just <laughs> like it's like, and then when it gets, if you see something where you're like, "Oh shit," you yeah. know, put it back to one time speed, then you're good. Like, I mean, it's, it's, episode, I skip it. Like, like as it, soon as like it's, more it's, more story stuff happens, then that's when it's, I'm gonna like start paying more attention. But otherwise, just yeah. Well, you go a little bit quicker through the story if I didn't recap the episode we just saw. It's just like <laughs> if, if if we were having to recap the episode we just saw, you probably shouldn't be watching this episode. You know? <laughs> Yeah. Fuck! I'm out. I'm bad. He's uh, he's really angry today. Oh, <laughs> like I said, it can only go up from here. I'll be fine next week. I think that the, my anger at Hero peaked last season when they all showed up to take down Chisaki, and everybody like teams up right outside their little fortress and to like lay out what all of their plans are. All the girls stay up front or stay on top to like fight people up there while all the dudes go down below and with no plan really they just Uh throw themselves on in i was like that was just everything about the setup of that was so lazy to me i don't think i've ever been more mad at the show than that so for me with this i'm like it's boring but eh, you know you just 
just skip a couple weeks of watching it. Yeah. <laughs> like, Basically, the this biggest is thing is like, wow. this is this okay. is Deku's world, and we're just. I mean, I just feel. The ride. I just feel like we're watching characters that we we'll probably will never see again, like the Mushroom Girl, uh, like Comic Guy. Like I, I almost guarantee it, we will never see them again. Then Justin, just tell me off stream. <laughs> yeah, they actually, oh, they actually become you know the one saving grace. I mean, like, Mushroom they, Girl they, is actually the true savior like, that like, you know I mean, leads Deku to greatness. Because I, 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 I forgot about Shinzo this all the time, and he came back. So, like. Yeah. Yeah. The only reason why I knew why Shinzo came back is because of one individual. Well, oh. the thing about Shinzo too is that his battle. Shut up, Threaten. Is that his battle <laughs> was like? I mean, it stood out from that season. Like it was not. It was presented differently than others. So I, guess, I mean, I yeah. felt, felt like that was pretty. Yeah, it was obvious. actually good character motivation. I feel like the character motivation for Class One B is really like the pompous guy who just wants to. I still. I, 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 I still. I Class One A. I still love a, that guy. It's an unfortunate guy. character to have that guy because then all of Class One B kind of gets grouped into that. Yeah, that's I, cool. like, I love that guy. I love how I just love how. <laughs> <laughs> this is his only goal and he he, he can't do it it's just it's right. the only thing he lives for and then you see it smacked around by, by kendo so who's yeah. worried about villains when we have class 1a to be <laughs> exactly right very very narrow like it's oh, funny, well, usually, yeah, usually, usually, I, usually i don't like 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 obnoxious smoke people like that but for some reason that guy i just he, i just feel his energy like i, I actually so, kind of agree with you on that david like like even though he can't, like he he he's struggling to do it. Like it's just funny every time he tries to clear it. So yeah, exactly. I think I'm good. Yeah. yeah, I have nothing else to say. So that's it for my Hero Academia. And then I guess we'll open the floor. If anyone wants to give any shout outs? Any shows we didn't mention yet? Uh quick, quick, actually, quick shout out that I did not put on the the list is um as actually for Zombieland Saga the. So for the first season, I, I actually didn't think like the CGI for like their the little routines were that bad at all. But I actually feel like they they stepped it up even more the second season. Like it looks insane how good the how good the CGI is. Uh, I just wanted to just give a shout out with that. I mean the story is still kind of like that. Yeah, like, like still kind of the, the story. It's uh, was it where that uh, the one of the previous members who was with like um one of the big bands from her time was actually reaching out to her and they're just it's more of like they 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 think like obviously they, they don't think it's her but it's a lookalike because you know she's been dead for i don't know how long so it was more of like kind of like the um the issues of keeping her with the french issue and not mm -hmm. having her like go to their team it's more of like kind of um, a couple of the, the members were worried that oh god is she actually gonna leave us and you know obviously that's that was never gonna happen i mean she's a fucking zombie so, but you know but <laughs> for the terms of the story they obviously didn't go to that point but it was a little bit more, than that, but uh, just like, but the animation, like, and just the CGI itself, I thought was was crazy good. Also, they had a couple of good musics, and David, if you do continue the show, they did do some more rapping. Yes, <laughs> looking for the rap battle. <laughs> oh Lord! Uh, another shout out, um, Justin. If you, we heard a little bit of your thoughts about next gen full dive. Oh, um, I'm probably out on full dive. Oh my god. Um, <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of one of those things where, again, like, as I've already said, I'm already watching some shows at two times speed. And Full Dive, <laughs> admittedly, was one of those shows. Oh, um, nice. So I'll, I'll probably pick up Kabaddi, you know, based off the, the good reviews that you guys have been giving week over week. Um, I think the thing for me of why I decided to most likely drop Full Dive this week is uh, the backstory for the protagonist, I just felt like is so dumb it was weird. Like, I, get, weird, yeah. I get how they tie it into like you know the trauma of him wetting his bed when he's getting you know kind of uh wow. sexually tortured of sorts wow what but am i hearing this was how they did it it was david it was so corny it was bad. Stupid. <laughs> like you didn't I like the random know. american medalist coming it, by no, yeah so that's the thing too where it's like it's kind of similar david of you know what we see with um uh oh my god moriarty where, you know, it's what Japanese people think will, like, hit oh. with the audiences of, like, oh, of Just, course, it will make fun of, like, some, uh, you know, super, super stereotyped, like, American athlete is cool thing. So, like, once I saw this guy and then him giving, like, his whole, like, pep speeches to the protagonist and everything, I'm just, like, this is, this is so dumb. Yeah. And then, like, you know, with what happens at the track meet and then the sister having her kind of, like, frustrations, I'm just, like, this is, like, there's no substance. Dang. Like, if anything, I really enjoy when he's in, you know, the actual virtual world. I think that's a lot of fun. And, you know, obviously, that's probably going to be the main focus. But 
it's just like I don't know. Even Anytime time outside of that world, I don't care. It was it was also really weak how he how he got back into the world too. I I was thinking there was gonna be more than just basically, you know, coursing him uh in a sense to basically to just to just um for the, the like the main girl. Yeah. Justin, uh, when, was... when you uh, when you said like the American stereotype reminds me, there, this is one manga called like Ratman, and it's about superheroes too. And of course, one of the superheroes is like is an American living in Japan. He has, has a hamburger restaurant. He's saying his power is like <laughs> is like Bull Man, whatever. And like yeah, and he has like the best like hamburger just, like <laughs> restaurant in Japan. And his daughter's also a cowboy. Oh <laughs> so... God! Of course, of course. Yeah. So it just reminds me of but... that. <laughs> I, yeah. I, I'll still be watching the show, but yeah, those were by far the worst parts. Was like his yeah. backstory crazy fucking weak. Uh, no, I, I think I was even telling Ku like I think there's a lot of good potential, especially for all more of like the female characters that they always tease in like the opening and ending mm-hmm. that uh, are gonna brush paths with the uh, protagonist. So I think that'll still be like good in a fun time. But did you? I don't know. This is all the other stuff. I feel like there's not much like weight and substance behind it, and it's like I'd rather you know go watch a, a different show. Did you think it was uh pretty weak on um, how like what how like how he actually went back into the world? Because I feel like he definitely Oh, that was another stupid thing when yeah, they man. brought together like the whole tutorial from this one guy and like of course he's like a super over the top like oh, I didn't pompous mean... dude. Oh yeah, I, I didn't mean that part. I meant like the main girl where she's like, "Oh, like I, like I'm like Oh, oh, you... oh yeah. 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 As, uh, as realistic as that may be, that would be the only way you would get me to go back in the game, right? <laughs> as realistic as that would be. Yeah. But even then, like this whole this whole episode was really really weak. Yeah. yeah. I but, guess it just didn't, it just didn't resonate much with me. I think it could have been better. But, so. Would you would you fall for it though when you just got debated in a sense by the the chick that was basically uh basically cutting you <laughs> Sren, again if i was in high school and she did this to me a hundred percent i would go back <laughs> uh, uh but yeah so i, I can't deny we'll, we'll see um I, would obviously fail. I, I was very negative but we'll see what i decide to do for next week so stay tuned yeah yeah let's see what happens yeah I, I, i'm gonna just ignore those couple episodes and just hope that it just it's just enjoyable to watch but that was i mean i still like i still like the storyline i still think that it has a lot of potential especially with how the first three episodes were um but yeah hopefully this is a one time but if they do do it again I'm, i would probably drop the show as well, well. So. I mean, it's like i honestly just don't care about his like real life it sounds bad but it's just like i just want to know about his in-game story yeah, now because, uh, fuck. not caring about real life is why we have so much isekai's friend yeah, yeah. But- but at the same time, like he didn't even have like a like a traumatic real life. It's just you, like he, it was he just, like, like he did. Like, what are you what are you talking about? He did, dude. Dumb. I mean, it would be pretty it's, traumatic it's of what happened, but it's stupid. Yeah, it's stupid. <laughs> but but I, I, I totally get why he is the way he is now. Yeah, I totally get it. Imagine you know you're on this track of getting no, recruited no, no, no. by the <laughs> best schools in the nation, and that yeah. happens. Yeah, basically, David, you're you're running on a you're running on like a, a race. You trip, you fall. You don't even you think, oh, that's it. No, you just pissed yourself. And then they can uh, kind of continue from there. How do you, okay. Fred, if that happened in real life, how would you ever come back from that? Like, I'd go to a different middle school. I'm not gonna, or a different high school. I'm not even gonna lie. You <laughs> so, were at the like national track meet where all the scouts were. There's no way you could run away from that. One for how much I go to the bathroom, I would not have forgotten. If I met my my <laughs> idol going on my way to the bathroom, like like I said, I don't blame him for what happened, but just the fact that the stupid was so stupid. I mean, yeah. the, the story was so stupid. Like, I get it. I, I understand it, but it was pretty dumb. It, yeah, it just feels like they were going so over the top. Like, the point, like, it's fine, like, if he met his idol and then, like, that caused some other type of reason for why he couldn't, you know, finish the race. Uh-huh. But it's like, okay, you literally had to tie in him pissing his pants. Yep. It's just very childish and just, like, not realistic. creative or realistic. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But, yeah. Um, anyway, that was a lot more than just a show. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. <laughs> but um, yeah. let's see. For me, uh, I'm still watching Red Mars. Um, story's still kind of pretty whatever. But again, the art style and the music is what's really keeping me um involved there. Uh, I would say the show that actually I've really been enjoying is um, The Sage's Power is Omnipotent. 
where in this week's episode, we finally get the revelation that, you know, Say is the true sage and everybody else is starting to learn about that because she's not keeping her, you know, powers really under wrap, especially with what she did in this latest episode. So uh, I'm interested to, to see where that goes. What was that? What happened with the other girl then? Did well, we, it sounds, we it, no it sounds like we, we have no idea. We're going to okay. eventually learn, but it sounds like obviously, you know, she hasn't been doing, you know, what now we've seen Say can do. So is it getting interesting? Because I didn't watch this week. Uh, it graduated from being all nice and buddy buddy like to uh, welcome to real life. Oh, God. In a sense, it's not oh, that serious. Um, I guess we'll have to maybe start watching that again. Uh, At least I will. I, I I wasn't planning on dropping it, but I just was busy and I was like, eh. I no, that's off. completely fine. <laughs> it's understandable. It's it's yeah. one of those like like one of those things where you just like like relax and watch like slice life. Exactly. You know? Yeah. So totally understandable. I was like, yeah, uh, it was my show that I could watch turn my brain off, enjoy, you know, the cute interaction, all that stuff. And then now this specific week's episode added uh, a little bit more than that to actually make me be like, okay, I need to start fully paying attention to like what's going on. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, okay. okay. Good to know. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. maybe I can add uh, my 17 shows. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Lord. 17. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was all I had. I didn't have anything else. Did you say you wanted to talk about Shaman King, Stratton, as a shout-out? Oh, yeah, I, had a, I did have a brief uh, brief shout-out. Um, uh, Yo's new form, I thought, was actually pretty cool. Um, with uh, Instead of actually, like, uh, having the spirit going to himself, he basically just has, like, the, the spirit going to the weapon, uh-huh. which, which I, I, mean, I didn't even think about it, but it makes more sense. <laughs> Seems legit, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah and it looked pretty cool. And also, I hate that other fucking that other dude. Where Red, I don't, uh, who Red. Ren, Ren, the guy we saw at the end. Yeah, the yeah. With the scare. Yeah, he's just like, oh, I was like, I just need to get hit on a movie. It's like, go get, go get, fuck. Get. I, I don't get how like he's able to do that though, because I mean, Yo was able to beat him before he even had like his power ups. I, you know, I don't know. It, Honestly, it happens. Like, just, <laughs> like, if it wasn't for the opening, I, like you know, him like becoming, I don't know if he's either an anti hero or just like a. Like uh, a group member for them, I would just want uh, that man to die. Like, I, it's just it's so fucking annoying. Mm, and he yeah. was on he was only on screen for like ten seconds. <laughs> yes, but uh, that's all I really had to say. That it's uh, but I, I thought that was pretty cool. Also, just like the the start of the Shaman King battle, mm-hmm. with, mm-hmm. and um, also just kind of um, oh god, his uh, his future wife's kind of like his little, like little backstory, Anna. basically. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. About yo, like uh, about yo, I thought that was also good. Yeah. The one thing for me, like, again, this is one of the shows that I just watched it two times because I, I know what, what happens. Right. But so uh, I did specifically watch it at regular speed for the final fight between them um, or the final test between Yo and Silva. Mm-hmm. But part of me didn't like the animation for Silva. I felt like he looked cooler in the original show. But maybe that's just me with rose tinted glasses and like, yeah, uh, I, I think that's that's great in your style. I'm sure it 100% <laughs> is, but other than that, you know. Oh, they're, shit. They're pretty, the, totem, the totem cannon was still pretty badass. Yeah, the totem cannon was cool. I think yeah. it's just one of those things, yeah, because I'm biased and I've seen the original airing and, you know, I know like traditional shonens had a very much. It's like the same thing with Hunter x Hunter. Like if you watch the 2011 versus the original mm-hmm. Hunter x Hunter, it's just that difference of art style. Yeah, and I think oh, geez, look, like, looks like intimidating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, he's still you know rightfully intimidating in the new series but i feel like it's definitely just because it's more glossy right it just didn't have as much like that grit and like weight right. to right. it that you got with like you know previous 90s early 2000s shows true true but yeah <laughs> just uh just yeah. waiting for them to to get to the new stuff <laughs> so just let us know when that happens as well I don't know how like, gonna it's, it's gonna, it's gonna be a while unless they decide to take huge liberties. <laughs> half a year, guys, calling it. Honestly, right, honestly. Year. So. Right. That's all I got. Cool. All right. Anyone else? Shout outs. All right. Uh, nope. We're, nope. Right, we're just gonna end right there then. So that's it for this week for piece of the podcast. Um Thanks, so Aaron. strong. Thanks. Yeah. Oh, do go ahead, Trent. Yeah, but basically was just saying, oh yeah, and thanks, uh, Banyas, for uh, jumping in. Oh, yeah, at the beginning. 
yeah so i always appreciate any anyone who chats i always appreciate the comments too so appreciate reading that um i thank the audience yeah. for me this week too always fun talking to you guys yeah we try yeah, to comment cool. with all the, the youtube videos as well yeah. um for the likes comments and all that stuff I just, it's crazy how much shows are watching for spring considering how we ain't know anything going on this season and now it's like we're almost as stacked as winter oh right. my god i would say more stacked like i think mm-hmm. we've had a couple more shows this season than we did last yeah but, but i don't yeah. I have a few more shows in last season <laughs> but still going strong <laughs> so continue on yeah. for it so we'll see you all next week bye guys bye, bye. bye.